Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadence, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT Blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code NerdRotic. I hunted, Rob. I hunted for Toby Maguire's dick. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Wait. I've got an idea. <laughs> My mind is a raging torrent flooded with rivulets of thought cascading into a waterfall of creative alternatives. Cow oh, darn it, Mr. Lamar. You use your tongue prettier than a $20 whore. Nergerotic.com oh, Double applause. We'll play it, X-Ray Girl. Let's do it again. Yay. Welcome to the Nerdrotic Nooner because everybody needs a nooner once in a while. Every day is very helpful. I heard the ladies like that. That's what I heard. <laughs> Word on the street. Word on the street. Hey, uh, holy crap, has a lot of stuff happened just this morning. Let's, Are you guys like, it, it? like, let's we go. need to go because, oh, my God. Um, Gina Carano called out all of Hollywood hypocrisy in the form of Rachel Zegler, who I think as far as thumbnails goes, has now become the face of Hollywood over, like, Tom Hanks grimacing. <laughs> Um, which is still a banger. It still works, you know, what, two, three years later. Uh, I think uh, her weird, weird face is uh, the face of Hollywood at this point. Uh, and it really, you know, we have this South Park coming out. We have this Marvel book that came out. Uh, and we have a Variety article that has come out as I drop everything on my desk. And... Uh, We'll see. I haven't even read it. We're going to read it live here, get our reaction. It's it's the access media turning on their masters. They smell blood in the water. We called this years ago. We said once, once the cracks start showing, which they were years ago, and once the access media, who was completely reactionary, um, uh, starts figuring it out and losing a lot of money, they will start to question their masters for now. Until they find a new master. Oh, on that note, another article came out from Rolling Stone. And apparently Casey Bloys and HBO got busted uh, gathering an army of trolls to go after critics. Um, in other news, water is wet. Uh, every <laughs> studio does this. Uh, if you go and look at my Rings of Power, the making of a disaster video, I go in as much as I can into detail to what happened to that show and i had heard from somebody pretty high up who used to work at amazon that jennifer salk is the one who initiated that article through variety which is obvious i mean it's freaking obvious uh it, to go after the fans uh this also explains the moses ingram fan attack it, there's a term for it that, that was made up by somebody in the media it's called fan baiting a real thing so all this shit you see on twitter is exactly what we thought it was and guess what that's what they were accusing us of like we were taking our extra money and time to make extra accounts or get bot farms or whatever to downvote captain marvel who's gonna do that i'm not gonna do that i don't give a shit i don't care if the whole world loves it it's a crappy movie so uh yes accuse your enemy of what you are doing uh 
I would love to say in, in, a, in a certain aspect, we are winning. We are winning. But it was after losing a lot. Like, we lost a lot. So uh, it's going to be... It's going to be an interesting few days. It is. Hi, Chris Gore. Welcome to the show. Uh, hey, Gary. Uh, good to chat with you. I am in Halloween recovery. <laughs> uh, I was out last night uh, in my, I had a Flash Gordon costume that I'll break out every once in a while. It's a lot of fun. Um, I was walking around with a glow in the dark football and just hanging out at the 35er or the Dirty Diver. Um, and then uh, Pasadena was just crazy with kids and people dressed in costume. It was a lot of fun. But on that bot on that whole uh, bot farm thing, I think that's really interesting. That clip that they released of the Marvels, which you've gone over, I think you went over it on the real BBC and I, well watched it. If you look at the comments under, it's crazy. The positive ones like can't wait. Love it. Then you look at that person. They have one follower or 12 followers. Additionally, their entire feed is just retweets of things. And then they're like reply guys, right? So they're just replying to stuff. So when you really dig into a lot of the, it was weird. This positive commentary had like things where, as is pointed this out too, where you'll see like a phrase and it's just repeated or reworded. And all this stuff is automated and it's bizarre. This is the stuff that Elon talked about stamping out, right? Getting rid of the bots. Let's have honest conversation. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm halfway through his, interview the new interview yesterday with joe it's rogan fantastic unbelievable oh. it's uh, so elon, good. elon describes the mo the woke mind virus uh we'll we'll we'll, we'll play it here later yeah, yeah yeah but anyways so i just want to point out like look at the comments under these things and see now i believe that what the the bots do it influences npcs to say yeah i'm gonna jump in on this fight and i'm gonna choose this side right so I do think it has an influence, so it works, or they wouldn't be spending money to do it. Um, because Twitter is weird. Like, I did a thing once um, when I did my campaign for Attack of the Dock. I hired a guy who knows how to break Twitter, and here's what he did. Oh. And the, no, I'll tell you what he did. So, and he's, he told me all this stuff about how fucked up Twitter was, and they were always changing things, but he could find a way to get around the rules. So I DM'd 2,000 of my Twitter followers every day during my crowdfunding campaign for Attack of the Dock. This is in 2019. And this guy told me all this stuff about how bad the platform was. But that's technically, there was a way to get around that rule, and he was able to do it. Uh, which was, uh, so anyways, that's a little rabbit hole we don't need to go down. We should get right into these articles. And hey, X-Ray girl. Hi. Good to see you. It's cool. you as well. Yeah. People. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. I am post Halloween, although I don't think I feel as bad as Chris. I don't know. I feel like I felt like a little pain, a hungover pain when you said hello. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I just I just I need this second cup of coffee. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on coffee, too. Uh, welcome. X -ray. I, I'm uh, welcome. X-ray girl. I'm not hungover at all. I feel great. Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> Mrs. Neurotic was is is a little under the weather though. It was kind of a bummer on our twentieth oh. wedding anniversary. But we passed out. Well, I say we. It's a royal we. I didn't pass out a piece of candy. Uh, my kids passed out oh. candy, <laughs> and it's great being in a neighborhood where you see kids walking around with their parents in costumes, uh, which you'd never saw in my neighborhood in San Francisco. Like so, it's it was like an eighties neighborhood. Fun. Uh, back in the day. Now, it's still not like it used to be. Razor Fist tweeted about this earlier. Like, Halloween in the 80s was insane. Your neighborhood would be packed. Uh, Cul-de-sacs would be closed off. It was, yeah, it was insane. It was too bad some of you yeah. guys missed that. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, I, I trick-or-treated all the way through uh, being a senior at high school. And I, I the costumes I had, I was Alex. Really? From, yeah, I was Alex from Clockwork Orange. And nobody knew who I was. That was it. I and it was accurate. I mean, I had the eyeball on the cuff. You know that. You know that movie, Gary. Maybe we shouldn't talk about it. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all right. Um, yeah, I guess we can start. Uh, we'll wait for a little while to get to the variety article. Uh, let's go. So SAG AFTRA didn't come to a deal at all yet. 
and they are like, murdering their industry. And I'm here for it at this point. They've they've brought this on themselves. We've talked about it a thousand times. It is the worst time strike in history or herstory, whatever way you want to put it. Um, and as everybody is now starting to turn on woke Hollywood, I still think there's a distinction. There's There's still a little sliver of Hollywood left, but Hollywood has mostly become woke Hollywood. And woke Hollywood is what needs to burn and die. Uh, if it's going to survive, uh, Hollywood will, will survive, but they will no longer be the most relevant place. They're not going to get the best people. They already aren't. I mean, that, we're already starting to see that they're lo losing generations of talent to other things, gaming, uh, <laughs> social media. Uh, they're, they're, they're not getting the best and brightest anymore. See Rachel Zegler, who is, I mean, she's a young idiot. That's what she is at. I was a young idiot too. And if somebody had given me a microphone when I was high as a kite, I probably wouldn't sound very good either, but at least I had an excuse of being on drugs. Um, but she sounds like an entitled, she sounds like what she is, an untitled, ungrateful uh, little, little biatch. And uh, she hasn't been in anything good. She has been surrounded by a bunch of people that have told her she has been anointed the next big thing in Hollywood. And everything she's been in has been a flop. And she's about to have another one. But apparently... She has been given uh, her movie, The Hunger Games prequel, that forced the that they wanted the writer to go out and write a book so they can base a movie on a, on a prequel of a series that's done. By the way, f prequels. I'm so sick of prequels. I think there should be a moratorium on prequels, uh, in film, especially with existing properties forever and ever. If you want to do something interesting in a TV show, fine. But like, honestly, I'm over prequels. I blame George for that. I do that whole prequel thing really started with him. Um, so Gina Carano is not done with her scorched earth policy on Hollywood, which I am so completely here for. I am loving every minute of it. There, I guess South Park or something in her just said, fuck it. I don't care. And <laughs> I love it. And uh, she shouldn't care. She doesn't need Hollywood. She doesn't need them. She's become a bigger force. Since Disney fired her, she's become a, a pop cultural hero. That's what she is. And that's a much bigger and better role. And uh, I love it. You want to pull up that tweet, X-Ray Girl? She, she is on fire. The other thing that she pointed out, I forget which one of her tweets, she talks about how this is affecting other people in the industry. Um, uh, I have a friend, Alex, who works at, uh, it's just a lighting rental house. He's laid off. He's like, he's looking for, so all the below the line jobs, which are basic jobs on a film set, those people aren't on strike. They're out of work. And I don't think, I don't think people understand how devastating this has been, how it's affected everything from below the line uh, film crew workers to just restaurants that are frequented by people in the industry. Like every, the, this is devastating the economy in Los Angeles for sure, but it's going to affect, obviously it's affecting the entire state. So. Yeah. And other, you know, like this industry does go into Chicago and New York and it, and it affects it. And yes, some TV stuff is on different contracts, but uh, it is decimating what they call the below, the below the line workers. It's decimating them. They're going to see places Closing down. We already know production's going to be halved overall. They're they're just going to have everything. Like that means fifty percent gone. Uh, the the longer this goes, and we're getting really close to that uh, date where the studios are like, okay, we're done for the rest of the year. Um, I think they have realistically until what they say Thanksgiving. So they have Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, a little little over three weeks to get it done. Uh, I don't know what they're far apart on. But, I mean, just the longer you're out, then uh, that think about this. That's it's a three year agreement, and you just wasted almost a year of your agreement. Is gonna all this shit's gonna get delayed? People are losing big movies now, and big actors tried to pay off their own union. That, that can't be undersold. So Gina uh, points out that uh, the hypocrisy of the Hunger Games prequel getting a waiver from the Film Actors Guild. 
Uh, so, I mean, I'm I'm happy as hell because Rachel yeah. Zegler is going to be on the red carpet and there's going to be promotion for this film. By the way, I'm seeing the movie tonight. Oh. So next you and I speak, I can tell you about it. Excellent. So. Uh, you know what? That's weird because that movie, it's weird. Weird, weird, weird. weird. Um, that movie comes out, what, two or three weeks after? It comes um, out the 17th of November. I'm seeing it tonight. Okay, seven to days. Be, and to be clear, I have not, and I'm on, by the way, I'm not like this super, I'm not, I'm not on any A list. I'm on the media list, which is general media. I'm, you know, uh, so I, I don't get super special treatment other than invites to screenings, but I have not, as of today, been invited to a screening of the Marvels. A there movie that comes a, out seven days before that one. Correct. Actually, you'll be able to see it a week from tomorrow on November 9th. Uh, Alan and I were talking about it and saying, did you get an invite? No, did I get an invite? And Alan's part of this actually special list of the uh, POC critics. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I know it's ridiculous. He oh thinks. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, you're, not wait, wait. you're not joking. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Wait, wait, you're not joking. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. And I'm like, Alan, can you just get me? Can I just be your plus one? And he asks the guy who runs the program and they say, no, I can't go. So it's literally discriminating. Um, it's the non-white it, critics, which is like, all right, well, whatever. As long as Alan, not gets whatever, it, that's discriminatory. Well, we can't, say, we can't keep saying whatever to this bullshit. That's discriminatory. Well, it's, it's you just, don't fight bigotry with bigotry. You don't. It's the new racism, Gary. It's, uh, I, it's oh yeah, it's yeah, like new Coke. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Jesus. But uh, okay, so. We haven't been invited to the general media screening. I'm suspect I'll get and I'll, I'll DM you when I get the info. Uh, but I suspect they're just going to show it the Wednesday before, and then the embargo will be the day it opens, which will be the ninth. So, well, that's gonna, I'm, I'm sure that's going to help. <laughs> I, right, I'm sure right. the well, you know what? They probably learned from Indiana Jones, to be honest with right. you. They released Indiana Jones in a month of just railing on that movie. They're like, okay, maybe we should just. As, as as put it, I think the description from Marvel was, we need to skate over thin ice as fast as possible. Yeah. Doesn't mean it, the ice doesn't still give out on you and you sink to the bottom and drown. But that clip, if the that clip is one of the highlights of the movies, because you don't put a clip out. This is a highlight of the film. This is one of the better parts of the film that you will see. And they drop that scene. Yeah, it's that, pathetic horrible music it's that pathetic. music is just like what is this again like what is the tone of this it's a good it just looks like a disney like if you saw it on disney channel you say oh that's a disney channel show and you would dismiss it and whatever but this is a marvel movie now i, I don't know man it, it's it's a marvel and we'll get to that okay first it's rachel uh gina carano uh this is from what is it yesterday or day before i can't remember <clears throat> What an odd story. What are you doing? <laughs> what? She's messing with me. She scrolled. <laughs> I'm like trying to start to read. Uh, oh. What an odd strike this is. Small non-studio productions are having trouble getting waivers, but studios get the interim agreements left and right. Celebrities go from picketing from the picketing line to their promotional tours and red carpet. What happened to that? I better get paid for every hour I stand in this dress talk. What? Yeah, what happened to all the talk of solidarity? Hmm. Meanwhile, the people who are actually suffering are the crews and actors not part of studio projects or, in, or the quote-unquote group to get their waivers granted. The ones whose money will run out quicker, the ones who are having to pick up a second line of work, the ones who will be controlled a whole lot easier once the strike ends based off desperation to work. Think that was an accident? Maybe they should have granted waivers for all the non-studio productions, keep people working and uh, and halt all studio productions if they really wanted to make a difference and reach a faster agreement. Uh, who is this strike really intended to hurt again? Better make a deal quick. People are starting to notice. I'm sure I'll be in favor of, I'm sure that, I'm sure it'll be in favor of all the right people and all the right people will pat themselves on the back and, uh, on an excellent deal and months of suffering well before the wait. At least while you're at it, 
you could throw into the agreement that will never again be permitted to allow any production to force inject poison. I mean, experimental jabs into people, into people's bodies in the name of science ever again. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing when there was a true crisis within uh, the Film Actors Guild that they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything to protect their workers who were being, being told to put something in their body against their will or they can never work again. Um, in New York, uh, there was a major lawsuit with teachers and, and uh, they, were, uh, they, got all, they got compensation and they were allowed back to work, the people who uh, refused the jab. Um, I'm wondering if something like that can happen within the Film Actors Guild. Uh, because that was, the, I mean, that's the purpose of a union. That's, that's, that's the real purpose of the union, not these fake negotiations every three years. By the way, the union is a fake safety net. It's just another job. How would you like it? Uh, I forgot what actor it was just posted on Instagram. My, my wife showed me a couple of days ago. It was a, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, 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 like a working class actor is like, hey, uh, I show solidarity for the union, but uh, I'm going to have to move out of my house because I can't make rent anymore. If you have any work out there, please give me a holler. Wow. That was his post. That was his freaking post. Uh, who And this act, I can't remember, was one of the shows she watches. He's on a show. He's on a show, about to lose his house, but shows solidarity. I'd be all, fuck solidarity. Screw that union. I'm about to, I have to sell my house, but thank God Rachel Zegler can promote her uh, incoming flop, her latest one. I'd be pissed. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, unions are stupid. U entertainment unions are stupid. Will always be stupid. Uh, and and it, it, it's playtime. It's all playtime. You're not working at a freaking salt mine. You're not working at a steel mill. You're pretending for a living, for Christ's sake. Get some perspective. Uh, you know, because that in itself wasn't something big enough to have had a huge strike over. The hypocrisy is palpable. The system is rigged and littered with posers. Uh, and then scroll down. We can show one of these posers. Art is free. Creativity is your rebellion. You do not need permission to do that. And there we have. Uh, yes. Wait. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. This is this is what I've been saying for years. You don't have to wait for anyone to give you an opportunity if you want to make an independent film. No one, you don't need to go through some, you know, some gateway or gatekeeper. You just decide you want to do a thing. Put that back up you, real quick, X-Ray. I want and, to show those you, pictures side to side. You raise the money and you make a freaking indie film like what those guys are doing at Epic Verse or I've made films. I'm not waiting for someone to give me permission. I'm not waiting around. I'm just Gonna no, do if it. you're fucking good, go out and do something. If you have confidence in your ability, go out and do it. Nobody's stopping you. Go write a novel. Make your own shit. Uh, no, you're, you're, you're not going to have uh, daddy corporation uh, taking all the risk for you and then telling you what to do all the time so you're free of any responsibility. You would have to be a true creative. You'd have to go out there and hustle yourself, get yourself out there. Uh, but if you believe in it, uh, no, you're not going to make, you, you know, you could potentially make more money than you would be working for these corporate masters because you'd be shocked at how little they actually get paid for shows. Uh, yeah, some were talking like 8000 a week. Well, that's for an actor on a Star Trek show. Uh, I forgot her name, but that was um, Ra uh, Rafi. Uh, God, I'm already blanking. Um, but uh, yeah, she was making like $8,000 a week. I'm like, for a star, yeah, so who plays a Star Trek show? That's a Star Trek show. That's not like some something on free on 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 Tubi or something like that. So you have a uh, uh, Film Actors Guild member Rachel Zegler on the left showing her solidarity in her uh, publicity photo shoot. She probably walked the line for about twenty or thirty minutes. Said she was going to go get a latte and never showed up again. Uh, and, uh, but by the way, a lot of the actors that they use to walk the picket lines aren't even going to benefit from this deal because they're the ones who have the time to do this stuff. The real rich ones, uh, go out for their little publicity shot, then go back to their mansions. They're not, they're not walking picket lines. Uh, and it, it's, it's all bullshit. It's all a show on the right. You see her publicizing her hunger games. 
Uh, so uh, Gina pointed out that, hey, we don't want to bring any unnecessary heat on Rachel Zegler. Just, it, she's just the living symbol of uh, hypocrisy. Right. Now, Gina, don't worry about it. She brings it on herself. Uh, you know, it, it, it didn't help her cause calling out the, the movie she's going to be in is a remake of the classic that made Disney. So she pissed everybody off. She pissed absolutely everybody off, and her agent and her publicist are fucking idiots. Because IBL, don't say anything. Don't say anything. If you want to have a career in this town, just go out and go, I really love Snow White as a child. I dressed as her as Halloween. This is the greatest opportunity. I'm living a dream. I get to pretend for a living and get paid for it. That's all you need to say. But no, it's such a tired story, patriarchy. Meh, meh, meh. It's like, dude. Nobody wants to hear what a little 20, empty-headed 22-year-old thinks about Snow White. And uh, she has a giant empty head and a unibrow, but that's me. Uh, so, yeah, Gina says, uh, this is also not to encourage heaps of hate onto the young lady. I don't want that. Unfortunately for her, she is just she's uh, really great at shining a light on the hypocrisy that's happening. Gina, you're being too nice. Remember, and she knows this. Of course, Gina knows, but I'm saying this to the chat. This is the woman, uh, Rachel Zegler is the woman who encouraged canceling Gina Carano over pronouns. So um, karma's a bitch. Karma is a bitch, and it's real. It's real. So go, you go, Gina. You go. Man, we'll have to see what else is going on. But Gina's been throwing uh, flames, Chris. And I love it. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's her. Also, she's dead on with all this stuff. It's really look Hollywood, the club, and you have to be one of the cool people. I, I mean, I'm kind of shocked. I've actually done the things that I've done and gotten, you know, into, I mean, I never, I just did the sort of one audition for this TV show called the X show. I went in and was kind of annoyed because at the time I was like a stay at home dad working on a book, whatever. And then every one job led to the next job and, and fine. So I did that, which led to G4 TV, which I think was the best gig in TV I ever had. It was also the least amount of money I ever made, but it was, it was fun, but it's, um, this is, she's speaking truths about the industry that if you want to go far, you're going to have to play a certain game or at least pretend to, um, and who's better at pretending than actors, uh, nobody, especially if you're a good actor. So Rachel Zegler's not that good of an actor, obviously. Uh, she never stood out to me. Like, even in, like, Shazam, I was like, wait, she's in Shazam? Like, I didn't even notice her, you know? Like, her character is not particularly memorable. So, I don't know, man. No. And she it's was weird. in the remake of West Side Story, which flopped. Shazam flopped. Hunger Games, gonna flop. Snow White, gonna flop hard. <sighs> Delayed till 2025. 2025 because they want to get away from all the bad press that's exactly why they did that uh if this thing came out in march it would just get destroyed by the time 2025 comes out it'll be a fart in the wind nobody will even care yeah. uh this stuff is falling so hard and disney does not know what to do they are they are in a crisis they are burning uh like and dude we said this shit was gonna happen like you, this is unsustainable. You cannot do this crap forever. You know, it, uh, they said it best in South Park. We keep making the same movie and over and over again, and it's not working anymore. <laughs> 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 it's weird. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I absolutely love to see it. I I, I have no sympathy for uh, Disney, Marvel, Lucasfilm, any of them. They've treated the fans like absolute shit, and they get what they deserve. You cannot disrespect any portion of your paying cus customer when you're a company. Any portion. Uh, I, I've said for the longest time, Access Media was definitely part of this, but I said, like, you don't have to listen to us. Just don't listen to them. Don't listen to the people on Twitter. Uh, you, you know, you pay these companies for marketing research. What are you getting back? Because you're getting better advice from YouTubers and people in their chat. And I'm yeah. sure you're paying thousands, tens of tens of thousands for these marketing third-party marketing companies who are doing shit for you other than 
going after critics on Twitter. I guess we could bring that up. We could bring up the Rolling Stone article. Nice. I don't know if it requires a subscription or not. Let me know. I know you get like uh, a certain amount of free views. I don't have the Rolling Stone article. It's in the. Oh, it's wait. In, I put there it we in. Go. There. Never mind. Yeah. I take take it back. <laughs> it was just under the screen. There we go. All right. That's uh. Scroll down here. HBO bosses accused uh, used secret fake accounts to troll TV critics. Shocking news, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Casey Bloys uh, ordered. By the way, HBO is like the one streaming service that that runs competently. That's. But the Access Media feels it's safe to go after Warner Brothers because they don't like David Zaslav. They certainly know that Disney does this. I know that Amazon does this. And by the way, Gina Carano just basically spilled the beans on Disney doing this as well. And I know the decisions come from the top. So, so it's interesting this is coming out. Uh, I think they even go after like Vulture. Who gives a shit about Vulture and Perry Mason? Uh, of course, Rolling Stone or none of the articles would admit that there were third-party companies going after, I don't know, Critical Drinker. Uh, Casey Bloys ordered staffers to create fake accounts to fire back at critics, according to the text conversations reviewed by Rolling Stone as a part of a new lawsuit. Uh, in June 2020, Casey Bloys HBO, then president of original programming, needed someone to go on a mission. Bloys, who was named an HBO CEO and chairman in October 2022, was irked by a tweet from Vulture TV critic Catherine Vander Ander Dock or Dock or Rock or whatever her last name is, uh, who had some thoughts about Perry Mason, HBO series starring Matthew Rise. As a private detective turned defense attorney in 1930s L.A., the remake of the original 1960s show carves out an origin story for Perry Mason, showing flashes of him uh, serving in World War One, World War One, where the uh, I'm not going to say her last name uh, felt was weak storytelling. Okay, so what? Like, I, did you watch Perry Mason? I didn't even watch Perry Mason. No, I watched the old Perry Mason all the time. Uh, Bloys was annoyed, according to text messages reviewed by Rolling Stone and sent uh, Van der Arendt or Gawker Gawker tweet uh, to Kathleen McCaffrey, HBO's senior vice president of drama programming, maybe a Twitter user, should tweet that that's a pretty blithe response to what soldiers legitimately go through on the battlefield. Do you uh, have a secret handle? Couldn't we say, especially given that it's D-Day to dismiss the soldier's experience like this seems uh, pretty disrespectful. This must be answered. So who cares what they said about Perry Mason? Uh, the bigger story is, uh, and Jeremy mentioned this on Daily. I was listening in the gym this morning. We were told, we were told that criticizing Disney Star Wars, Disney Marvel, Star Trek, Doctor Who, was was helping them. They actually like it. They like, there's no such thing as bad press. We're practically employees of Disney and Amazon for, for criticizing and pointing this out. Oh, it turns out that's bullshit. And it's always been bullshit. Um, Gina Carano's tweet from two days ago, she was asked to unfollow people. But I thought we were helping Disney. Why would she need to unfollow a, uh, why would a company want her to unfollow certain accounts because we're helping them? Oh, that makes no sense because because it's bullshit. It's always been bullshit. So uh, I think it's pretty rich. And uh, as I said, this this isn't the only time we've heard this. Now, we're, we keep hearing a lot of stuff associated with Warner Brothers again because the access media hates them. They don't like Zaslav. He's like the enemy. Even more than Iger still. Uh, because he wants to make money. Ultimately, he's like, yeah, we got to cut a lot of this shit and we want to make money. Not that, you know, Warner Brothers can be woke. They can all be woke. Uh, the exchange was on the last six. Uh, the exchange was one of at least six instances between June 2020 and April 2021 in which Bloys and McCaffrey discussed using what they call a secret army to fire back at several TV critics on Twitter. So as Chris 
talked about earlier, isn't it strange that below certain Disney Marvel tweets and Disney Star Wars tweets in particular, because mm -hmm. I'm critical of a lot of things. I'm critical of the Rings of Power, critical of a lot of stuff, but it's really only with Disney Star Wars and Disney Marvel, you get the rando anime avatar that will respond to you and they'll get like 2,000 likes, and then you go to look at the actual interaction, there's no comments, and the likes are a lot of accounts that look like that account. It's strange. I'm not saying all of them are bots. I'm sure they are people. I'm sure there's a there's a lot of people out there who will just, as you said, it, it kind of fills the NPC mind. It, it, it drives the conversation. So yeah. even if these bots are fake, which they are, a, a lot of them, especially when you look at like, 12 followers, their entire feed is just retweets of stuff. And all they're doing is replying to things. That's a bot. Uh, that's a bot. And, but what I do believe is that it drives conversations for NPCs that are like, well, I'm going to jump on this team because they're the winning team, I guess. But so, so they see it as something that's helping. I think it's disingenuous for sure. And it's the thing that Elon Musk has been trying to stamp out on Twitter, obviously bots, it, it should all be real people, right? Like, so I don't know. I agree. Yeah. If it's real people, I, you know, I, I, there's, believe me, that's the majority. There are real people who just like Disney brand that like the word Marvel in that red uh, rectangle and don't really follow it or don't care. And then there's a certain amount of people who just want to own, own the chuds, own the chuds. I mean, the entire industry wants to do that. I mean, that's what the comic industry has destroyed itself by wanting to own the chuds. That's it. Their their motivation behind turning a character gay is not for progress. It's to piss off their enemies. You're being used. Well, I think it's sort of like the way I see it is, um, do you want actual progress or do you want revenge? And I think it's revenge. in some cases with some of the people that I see, they just want revenge. Maybe, you know... I, I really feel like that's in some people's minds. It's it's weird to see it. It's weird to see it. And um, I don't want to say who, but I was hanging out with a friend this weekend who was just telling me how fed up she was with just the attitudes in this in this town and the fear of just speaking openly about what she believes about certain things. So uh, I, I, we're just in like this dark, dark era. And I, I think what they're trying to do is drive the conversation in a way where most people don't actually think this way, right? And 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 it's uh, it's just sad to see. Um, yeah, I, I as things are falling apart, as the access media has less fluff to report on, they're going to start looking within. They are. I mean, this is probably a natural response to like the lack of news, the lack of actors talking. Uh, they're going to look within and they're going to find something to write about. And this is safe. This is extreme. I mean, talking about Perry Mason, I think it's canceled. It's a canceled show. Right, uh, right. But again, it's it's the bigger story. The bigger story is they weaponize. Uh, they weaponize their marketing departments. They weaponize their own people against critics. Um, and uh, that was something Gina said just a couple of days ago. Just because people were calling her crazy. Uh, even though she worked there, she actually experienced it. But some rando fucking Disney Star Wars podcaster knows better than her. Okay. But this is this is why journalism today in particular. I mean, look, you can talk about entertainment journalism being bad. My guess is it's across all levels of journalism, all types. But I knew this was years ago. And I thought this and I was like, why is this when the news was became a tweet that was sort of yeah. like, no, this was, I, I, I can't, you know, I don't know. It was like five, more than five years ago, but like, I'm like, no, it's, it started, someone, you think started it started creeping in then? around five years ago. Like, well, yes. When tweets started making the news, I remember when it happened, it was weird. Right. It was, it was freaking weird. strange. Like, who gives a shit what somebody says on Twitter? Yeah. That's a new, that's, that's a news story now or the worst is like celebrity gossip news which i could give a shit about but it's like yeah. kim kardashian liked a post about this 
and then they'll get canceled for liking a post. My guess is, is that that's what Gina Carano got herself in. She was liking, uh, she was liking posts that were not the approved thing to like. Is that you know what I mean? Like, she was liking geeks and gamers posts. She was liking Ryan right. Kinnell's post. She was liking my posts. She like yes. Well, to be fair, Brie Larson also liked some Ryan. Yeah, Kinnell posts. I'd like to point that stuff. out. We got to point that out that Brie Larson liked a, a Ryan Kinnell post, and he will never mm -hmm. ever stop talking about it. <laughs> I love it. I think it's hilarious. Um, and uh, now he's a simp. It's okay. I understand. Yeah, um, it happens. It happens. <laughs> I mean, the feet it will get you every time. I guess. Oh Actually, no, don't, not that feet. No. Don't look at the feet. Don't look at the feet. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go very lost in thought <laughs> no i was just waiting for you guys to finish talking about brie sorry larson's about feet sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> move it up, move but it but yeah we can move on from this it's just gonna you know talk about casey bloys who i actually don't like hate i think he's done some good stuff at hbo uh i mean but if you're if you're weaponizing people against critics maybe that that stems from the game of thrones criticism <laughs> I'm sure they didn't like that. Uh, but uh, dude, everybody, that's part of the job. You're gonna get criticized. This is this is the modern world. A bunch of freaking olds, and that's the problem. There's a bunch of olds still running Hollywood. Kathleen Kennedy isn't old. She's a she's a, she should be a grandma writing $12 checks to her grandchildren. And she's running one of the most well, formerly the the most valuable IP on the planet. And uh she ran it into the ground and she's out of touch. She's completely out of touch. God, I was watching. I'll talk about that later. Uh-oh. Well, they they some Doctor Who specials came out. Some Doctor Who specials came out. <clears throat> really? Yeah, it was just like some little sit down. Um, They're like in interview conversational things, not like an actual. Yeah, show. no, no. It's it's filmed on the set of a TARDIS, and it's supposed to be like a memory center. And you have the fifth doctor and the sixth doctor and the seventh doctor. And uh the I watched one where the fifth doctor uh is talking to Tegan. And they're basically what they do is that they reflect on an episode. So you watch the old episode. It's kind of a good idea, but that he's talking to Tegan and and uh He's all, tell me about your life, you know, tell me about the normal stuff. She's like, well, uh, I decided to follow your path and work to fight climate change. She's like, fight for the environment. And I'm like, oh, fucking fuck. Mm. God. <laughs> That's so cringe. So it's just propaganda. So, so, so you went all over uh, the universe with the doctor and you want to fight for the environment. It's just such a, God, I hate the BBC. I really fucking And on do. one planet, too? That yeah. Sense. You know, being with the doctor, he would probably have a little more. He would probably go, well, just 12,000 years ago, it was like 18 degrees colder on average on the planet. And then uh, after the Younger Dryas, where it varied uh, 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit uh, over a thousand year period, which was a thousand years of hell, it kind of leveled out. It was actually warmer uh, eight to 9,000 years ago. Uh, and also in the medieval times, it was a little warmer than it is now. And everybody flourished uh, because uh, warmer weather is better. And it's far warm. It was far warmer back then than they're worried about it becoming now. But they don't talk about that. But maybe the warm period was caused by all the cars in the medieval times. All the cars in overpopulation. Maybe. Why? Oh. Watch Randall Carlson's stuff on that. It's pretty fascinating. But I just like, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, God damn. Can you just talk about Doctor Who? Can you just <laughs> like reflect on Doctor Who? It's like, we're going to fight for the environment. It's like, fuck. Uh, yeah, the, all the specials have been announced. So the anniversary special is two days after the anniversary, which is dumb. It's going to air here on Thanksgiving Day, uh, which is still dumb. It's still they wanted to air on Saturday. I get it, but like just air it on the anniversary, the, at least the anniversary one, and the following ones could be on Saturday. So they're doing three specials: one on Thanksgiving, one on the first of December, one on the ninth. Um, they're all this extra stuff. You have to be in the UK to watch. You can't watch it here. It's not on. And God, just to make it even worse, it's on Disney Plus. Freaking oh, specials. Really? Are, so what I am gonna do? 
is I'm going to march on over to my VPN and watch it on uh, the BBC iPlayer like I've done in the past. Because <laughs> the funniest thing about the BBC iPlayer is when you sign up, <laughs> when you sign up, they go, do you have a license? And I went, yes. And I was waiting to provide something and I didn't need to provide anything. It just said, okay. <laughs> I, I was like, what? Oh God. Love the British. Love the British. Uh, and then, you know, right before Doctor Who airs, at least the, the bad Doctor Who on Sunday, it would be Country File leading on, which I, I used to like that show. And uh, now it's just all climate change. All right. Doctor Who ran over. We'll, we'll be talking more about Doctor Who once the we get closer to the special. And yes, we're going to do our top five on the real BBC before the 60th. Before the 60th. Uh, I'm going to read a couple soups and then we're going to go to that variety article. I think everybody's here. By now. I can't wait, man. I can't wait for this variety article. Yeah. Well, it's going to, okay. I haven't read a word of it. I read the headline. Uh, it, it came across my desk. I don't, I don't really have a desk. All right. <laughs> so what I have here, this is, it's a, it's a card table. It's a, it's an old eighties card table. It's round, right? Mm -hmm. It's even got the green thing on it. Uh, and it, it's, I wanted to, cause I had this table that took up my entire room and I want, I, I just want a table that doesn't take up my entire room so I can walk around it. So yes, mm -hmm. I don't have a desk. I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a 1980s game table, but it came across my 1980s game table and, uh, I, I couldn't believe, I'm like, God dang, like, I'm not going to say poor Disney. Disney's getting, they're getting destroyed. Um. And and another thing that that I thought uh, was uh, really good that Jeremy brought up on on daily was, you know, with with Gina's particular tweets, they are very strategic and precise. It's not like kitchen sinking, and I, I am not for kitchen sinking. You know, not everything is woke, not everything is woke, not everything is intersectional. Some shit is just bad. Some stuff is good that might be perceived as woke. It's picking your shots, choosing your battles. Uh, because this is a battle. To deny it's a battle, I mean, that's ridiculous at this point. There is a major culture war going on, uh, and it's it's a cultural revolution that has been happening that has turned into a war that Razor Fist said so correctly. Uh, but you need to be smart about it. I, I'll use my statements. I need to be smart about it. I'm not going to pick on everything because uh, I, I don't think that does any good. I think it you you, but this is the this is the universe unfolding as it should. That book coming out, South Park, Gina Carano, this article, all the stuff we said was going to happen is now happening. Where does it end? Uh, I would I would argue it already has. It, it already has. Just Hollywood will take a year to figure it out, maybe two. Um, is it going to go away forever? No, hell no. Will there always be these problems? Will there always be idiots like Rachel Zegler? Yes, that's part of the world. Uh, but, you know, if Hollywood wants to survive, because we'll move on, we'll be fine. Hollywood burns down tomorrow. You know, it, I'm sad for Chris. Uh, I, I, I'll i get you out of that fire. But, uh, oh, well, I'll talk about old shit and game. <laughs> I don't care. I really don't care at this point. Uh, you know, I want it to survive. I, I think it can survive. It'll never be what it was, but it needs to find balance, man. Um, the the hypocrisy is, you know, Jonathan Majors is in a lot of trouble, and this will lead to the article. He's in a lot of trouble, but I don't want him fired. I don't think the man should be fired till he have his day in court and it's right. proved in the court of fucking law, right? Uh, I hated Pedro Pascal's statements, uh, but I wouldn't want him fired. I also didn't want Gina Carano fired. Gina Carano should not have been fired. People have done far worse. If Gina Carano did what Jonathan Majors did, she'd be fired. If Gina Carano, uh, Gina Carano did something like Pedro Pascal did, which she didn't, by the way, because his tweet was far worse than hers, she would have been fired. So we need that balance to come back. You can only have one set of thoughts in an industry that's discriminatory, it's bigotry, it's uh, violating free speech, it's violating everything. But, um, you know, after we read this article, we'll listen to e 
Elon Musk described the woke mind virus and where it comes from, and he's fucking spot on. Having lived in the Bay Area for 18 years, he's spot on. Let's pull up that article from Variety. Oh, dude, I, <laughs> we can't even get around to, the, to, to like, can't even get around to the the Elon stuff. But what, God, what he said about Berkeley is so. I used to work next to Berkeley. Berkeley is, uh, it's like Berkeley Stan. You know, it's it's really bad. It's really, really bad. Yeah, I really enjoyed visiting the Bay Area, but I couldn't really stand it. It was just, it was like a different kind of human. And also, sort basically, a, a lot of narcissism and also arrogant about, you know, how the world should be rather than, like, how yeah. it is. Or uh, I, I've always been Captain Common Sense, you know. Uh, solidly in the middle uh, um, amongst the nonsense. There's a lot of righteous ignorance in, in Berkeley and that festers and, from the university. And you're absolutely right. There's like punk rockers there who are collectivists. Like what the fuck are you talking yeah. about, dude? <laughs> oh my God. I mean, there was certainly that wing of punk rock, but it was a wing. Okay. It wasn't punk rock. It's not about collectivism. Fucking retards. Um, but uh I remember I talked to, I can't, can't believe, uh, he had a shop. Uh, he was one of the bass players from DRI, and he had a pretty cool toy shop. That guy was cool in Berkeley. They had some cool toy shops there, but most of Berkeley, like, I couldn't go into a coffee shop there. I it's It was, you know, even when I went to Rory Root's comic shop there, like, I'd have to just, like, have my earmuffs on so I don't listen to the fucking, it, it was just, you have to go there to understand like how lost Berkeley is absolutely lost. But yeah, you, they're so righteous in their Like they are so sure their worldview is the right one. They are just absolutely who in the hell rolls out of bed thinking that every day. I don't. I'm like, yeah. I think I kind of know how the world works, but like I'm open to ideas and I, you know, I'm not sure about much. I like coffee. I'm sure about that. Uh, crisis at Marvel. Jonathan Major's backup plans, the Marvel's reshoots, reviving original Avengers, and more issues revealed. <laughs> reviving original Avengers. How about recasting them? <laughs> Shit. Like Robert Downey, it'd be great to see him come back. Sure. He ain't young. Did, did you see him in Oppenheimer? That's closer to the re, what the real Robert Downey Jr. looks like, by the way, without dying his hair. <laughs> so, um, and he looks great. He, well, no, he's starting to look a little vegan. So, yeah, he looks super, especially in Oppenheimer. He looks amazing. Oh, you can put that it's back not, up. It's not right. healthy. It's not healthy looking. No, it's all. not healthy to go like up and down. Away. Remember, Christian uh, Bale had a bunch of health problems from seesawing back and forth you got to be kind of cool with that organs don't like that your organs your muscles really organs, don't like bones. that your, your mus muscles atrophy and it's yeah uh this past september a group of marvel we'll just use air quotes creatives uh including studio chief kevin feige assembled in palm springs for the studio's annual retreat most years the vibe has been confident even cocky Given how the premier superhero brand owned by Disney since 2009 has remade the entertainment business in its image. And boy, is the entertainment business regretting that. Uh, but this occasion was angst ridden. Everyone at Marvel was reeling from a series of disappointments on screen, a legal scandal involving one of the biggest stars, and a question about the viability of the studio's ambitious strategy to extend the brand beyond movies and streaming. By the way, Nelson Peltz coming in. With with Ike Perlmutter's stock shares cannot sit well with Kevin Feige, who forced Ike Perlmutter out, who's the guy who okayed the MCU, by the way. So they made him this, this big old enemy, but he okayed all this shit and okayed the sale to Disney, uh, and they betrayed him. They betrayed him because he was a Trump supporter. Uh, they tried to make him out to a racist. This guy's never, like... He doesn't give interviews. He doesn't have his picture taken very much. And he might be the biggest dick in the world. I don't know. But I also know that from this book, which was super critical of him, I also know he's, I have respect for the guy because he's a self-made man. Like he moved, he moved to America, dirt poor, a war veteran from Israel, dirt fucking poor and turned himself into a billionaire. 
No idiots do that. All right. Uh, he's not, he doesn't come from old wealth and it's not inherited. Uh, you know what? And Kevin Feige, a, he was like a middle class kid who became a producer, but he just became a, a typical Hollywood producer, which is sad. I think we lost him at some point. Um, I'll, I'll be kind about that. But that, yeah, that, so that, uh, that stock, that potential proxy war um, is coming. And, and that's not going to bode well for Feige, right? Uh, the most pressing issue to be discussed at the retreat was what to do about Jonathan Majors. Um, I agree with Ryan Kittle completely. Innocent until proven guilty, but he should be fired for his acting because it's fucking awful. It's fucking terrible. It's objectively shit. I, I, I like especially in that last episode of that last that last episode was embarrassing. Embarrassing. I, I actually don't blame Jonathan Majors as I much do. as I blame I blame the director, who should have looked at his take on it and said, "This isn't working. Let's try something different. Dial it down a bit. Maybe like the director really is to blame for not giving good notes to Jonathan Majors because I believe he can act." And by also another thing on Jonathan Majors, they moved a movie that played at Sundance. There's a review on Film Threat called Magazine Dreams. Yeah. It's this bodybuilder, whatever. They pushed it. It's now off the release schedule. He was, when that movie uh, was released at Sundance in January of this year, they were all saying Oscar nom, Oscar nomination, a lock for that. And, and I heard that from people, I did not see the film, but other people who work with me at Film Thread did see it, and they said it's it's an amazing film. Off the schedule, done. That movie may never get released based on the based on the outcome of this case. Well, uh, here's the pro here's why here's why you can blame the director, but dude, ultimately he does the acting, and it, and it's True. and he has he has no range, right? So he can be Jonathan Majors, like playing like a stoic and evil king in Ant Man's probably his best role because his it, he who remains at the end of Loki was terrible, and and Victor Timely is fucking terrible. I mean, like, I yeah. am cringing through his acting, and I feel bad for him. To blame the director? Blame the system. A director can't go to a black man and go, try that again. They th Now, they probably still could, but they feel like they can't, depending on the director. Say it's a white director. Uh, the, the, the way the environment is in Hollywood, they can't do that shit anymore. They're afraid they're going to get canceled. This is the problem with all this DEI shit. You have artists afraid to being uh, afraid to be artists, you know, and uh, and and that's also the me two times up stuff. It's not all that. It, it's also so you have these rules and sensitivity and all this shit, and you can't just go like cut. That was shit. You need to do that again. That that needs to come back to Hollywood. That does. You know, being a dick is not against the law. It shouldn't be against uh, any HR rules. And, you know, sometimes you have to be a dick when you have millions of dollars on the line and you've got a schedule and you're trying to get this done. And it's part of the creative process. Uh, imagine there being an HR department in rock and roll in the 70s. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fucking what? That's, oh, my God. I was just having I was having a conversation with a friend. I actually put it in the private chat. With this, and I also put something else in the private chat, uh, like uh, that just dropped. I don't know if it's worth looking at it all but anyways we were talking about how there's been all the me too stuff what no where's the me too in music right this priscilla movie is supposed to come out directed by uh, sofia coppola um i've heard very mixed about it but it basically goes after it, it's it's intended to make elvis look very bad but lo look at musicians throughout history right like and i kind of feel like why hasn't there been a Me Too movement in rock and roll or the music industry? Hasn't happened, but I guarantee there are <laughs> there's, many cases. There's I horrible mean, stories. Horrible stories. Yes. They sang songs about it. Kiss sang a song. Christine, 16. I mean, come on. I mean, uh, it, yeah, like... I mean, there and there's. I mean, there's. Didn't David Bowie and some girlfriend have a relationship with a girl who was at the time thirteen? Like this is all. This is like documented stuff. This isn't. But there's been no canceling of those of of anyone in music that I've seen, other than they've gone after Michael Jackson. Separate conversation. Separate thing. Don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But I'm just saying, um, this happens. In, it happened in the entertainment industry for a reason and it was a power grab that's all it was about looking back 
you can see it. I didn't know. We really couldn't see it at the time, but it was all about a power grab. It was, it was a, a power huge grab. power grab. Uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, most obvious is Jar Jar Abrams' wife heading right. up me two times up as a is basically it was a it was a charitable organization that was a corporation. Right. That was a freaking corporation, and they all quietly left after Asia Argento and others were caught being complete liars. Fucking liars. And, uh, but what did happen is, I always forget his name, the guy who was running WB Studios, it was another Asian guy before Walter Hamada, slept with an actress. So for Jar Jar to go over there for their deal, they had to get rid of him, and that was Jar Jar's wife's edict that came down, and they did it. Um, Roy Price, guy who started Amazon Prime, Fired for a dick joke at a party. Right. How dumb. Fired for a fucking dick joke at a party. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, and never allowed to come back, by the way. No apologies or anything. No court, no charges, nothing. I mean, that's, that's, it ruined lives. Yes, there was legitimate stuff. Harvey Weinstein was a piece of shit. Everybody knew that. And oh, yeah, everybody protected him until, until it was, until they didn't need him anymore, or they they wanted to preserve their own careers. Uh, but and and yes, that, guess what? That stuff is still going on in Hollywood. Do you think you solved that problem? It's just you know it's quieter now. It's much quieter now. But uh, yeah, the, the hypocrisy is everywhere. But it doesn't mean you like. It was just a push for power. Uh, yeah, Roy Price was in charge of Amazon, had had it going in the right direction. They jettisoned him. Jennifer Salk comes in, uh, and she's an idiot. She's a bona fide idiot. Oh, and she also went after fans. She also was the one who gave the word to go to pre a preemptive attack for fans on her shitty show because they knew it was shitty. They knew it was shitty. Uh, back to Marvel. But this occasion was, uh, I read that part, uh, the actor who I've been poised to carry the next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but instead is headed to a high-profile trial in New York later this month on domestic violence charges. Um, the actor insists he is the victim, but the damage to his uh, reputation and the chance he could lose the case has forced Marvel to reconsider its plans to center the next phase of its interlocking slate of sequels, spinoffs, and series around Major's villainous character, Kang the Conqueror. So, do you think the Kang Dynasty is going to get canceled? Because I think there's a very good chance that it that... might get Kangstled. It might um, get Kang. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Gary. No, it's okay. We're dead. But it, that's what we but do. It's Exactly. But it, yeah, I, I just think he's going to be recast. It's not as if there's not another actor out there that they could fulfill that role. It's going to make the phase look really weird, like build up with him and then recast. Uh, yeah, just just have Kang start like start just a back shot of Kang. Right. And he's right. opening up all his portals. And then the high evolutionary comes in and just slits his throat and takes over. I mean, that like. I thought that or, actually, high evolutionary was great. Or you take this opportunity of of Loki. He, I thought he was really good too. Better actor, yeah. better presence, better motivation. I mean, like Space Mengala. You know, it's like that's yeah. that's 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 a good villain. That's a good villain. Um, so I would take this opportunity of the last uh, Loki episode of everything blowing up and just not release the next two uh, Loki episodes and say everything just blew up. <laughs> And start yeah, over. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. Everything just blew up. Um, Thanos was right. Uh, Thanos was right. Uh, reversing the snap was a bad idea. Uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Killing Iron Man was fucking stupid. That was stupid. To uh, by the way, Robert Downey Jr. was against it. Had to be convinced. Uh, John Favreau was against it, as you've said in the past. Yeah. Chris. Um, and, uh, the, 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 the five-year gap was just a, a horrible idea. You would have to spend an entire phase on the fallout from that five-year gap. Just thinking about it makes my brain hurt a little bit. Uh, so at the gathering in Palm Springs, executives discussed backup plans, including 
pivoting to another comic. By the way, how did they find out all this? Marvel is really, really type lit. I, you know how they found out? Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige leaked this shit. That's how they fucking found out. Uh, back, okay, so at the gathering in Palm Springs, executives discussed backup plans, including pivoting to another comic book adversary like Doctor Doom. Who's been saying they should bring in Doctor Doom? I can't. Yeah, I mean, I can't like, remember who actual, said it. We've never seen real Doctor Doom on no. screen. We've seen Doctor Doom versions of Doctor Doom that were terrible takes. That guy from the Nip Tuck show that played him in the, it was awful. And then came back for the Silver Surfer movie. It was just so bad. Darth Vader is Doctor Doom. Just to give you an idea. You know, Darth yeah. Vader's kind of, he's kind of, he's kind of, he's kind of cheeky. Right. Apology accepted. You know, like that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's Doctor Doom. Uh, but making any shift would carry its own headaches. Majors was already a big presence in the MCU, including as the scene stealing antagonist in February's Ant Man and the Wasp, Commie Mania. Um, scene stealing antagonist in a movie that flopped, just to point out. And he had been positioned as the franchise next big thing in the season of Loki, particularly in the finale, which airs on November 9th and sets up Kang as the titular character. Uh, star for the fifth Avengers film in 2026. Remind I remind you all, it is mentioned in in this book, I believe, and it's mentioned other places that um, Jonathan Majors was was chosen to to be this the center of uh, Phase Five through the hype from the end of season one of Loki. I, I mean, like what a what hype? I, yeah. I was there. I was alive. I was covering every, every episode. I reviewed the series. I did not see all this hype for Jonathan Majors. I saw some Marvel stands going, he was great. But, like, I didn't see what would be considered hype. I saw a lot of bullshit. Uh, I love this quote. Marvel is truly fucked. It's like a Ryan Kinnell uh, thumbnail. Uh, <laughs> we are fucked. We are fucked. We are uh, fucked. With the whole K thing, say, Kang thing, says one top deal maker who has seen the, fina the final Loki episode and they hadn't had an opportunity to rewrite it until very recently because of the WGA strike. But I don't see a path to how they move forward with him. Marvel is truly fucked. Wow, that's in a fucking variety article. That's in a variety article. Oh my God. God, our detractors must be so upset well, right now. Look at these bigots in variety. Look at these alt writers in variety. Uh, by the way, I put a, a link in the a private chat from Deadline. It's just updates on the case. The main thing is he faces a year in prison. This is not a small thing. And there have been other, um, other incidents. Uh, uh oh, there have been other incidents. The, the 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 article I sent is just sort of up. It's an updated like the latest on. It's not that much news. It's not worth bringing up. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just giving it for context for you to look at later. But um, I don't think he, with all of this, it's so innocent or not. If they're moving forward, I don't know. But like, we have seen other cases where they move forward where it's kind of like person's probably innocent like where they're gonna i mean um but yeah this is um well what do they do do they wait for the trial yeah. do they wait for the trial i mean they should but they have schedules to keep um right. you recast him and he's innocent well i mean hollywood's had no problem with people being exonerated and just completely fucking him over that rick and morty dude got exonerated oh, right. they didn't bring him back so, uh, and they ruined their show. I mean, I didn't like their show very much anyway, but um, they ruined their show. Yeah. They ruined their show. BBC got rid of Jeremy Clarkson over a fucking catering incident where the guy he even, like, smacked, like, didn't care later on. Um, and uh, I think it was, like, a sandwich or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Correct me if I'm wrong in chat. And they ruined the biggest show in the fucking world. 
uh, this is, uh, we can never go back to this, Chris. It's, I've said it before, too big to succeed. When these things get too corporate and you have to answer all of these nebulous shareholders and there's so many cogs in the machine, you can't run a creative industry. You just fucking can't because you can't be creative. Eventually it becomes stymied by middle management and activists and all this shit. And, and then self-editing, like I said, that director wasn't going to tell Jonathan, Jonathan majors would probably look at that director and, poof, you know, and, and we, we know television directors don't have the power that a, that a, that a film director has. Right. Yeah. So, uh, they're just there to facilitate things basically. So uh, yeah, uh, you made your bed, Hollywood, you made your bed. Beyond the bad press for majors, the brain trust at Marvel is also grappling with November's release of the Marvels. <laughs> A sequel to 2019's blockbuster Captain Marvel. That was originally, the sequel was originally called Captain Marvel 2, and Captain Marvel was demoted in her own sequel and surrounded by a shield of diverse women. I wonder if any of them are gay and lame. Uh, and that has been plagued with lengthy reshoots and now appears likely to underwhelm at the box office. By the way, <clears throat> the reported budget of this film a year ago was $270 million. It's now well over $300 million, too. It doesn't look like it's on the screen. I mean, everything I've seen from the new trailers to, you know, they're, they've released, they've rolled out a bunch of trailers and TV spots. I've watched everything, of course. And the scene, I'm thinking, how did this cost so much? You know, like, I, I, I don't get it. It costs over twice as much as Dune 2. Oh, my God. Twice as much. But I think I think also I mean it's a management thing. What did I? One of the greatest quotes from um, Elon Musk was talking about just like uh, said the government's job is capital allocation, how we spend our money, and they're objectively terrible at it. And I feel like that's Disney's problem. They're not good at allocating money. Whereas a director like Denis Villeneuve, who's you know he's he he just knows how to spend the money in it, you know what's worth spending money on. And I think is also a really good planner. Um, just, you know, having talked to a lot of directors on my channel, we do these interviews and we have an interview channel. I mean, one of the, you wouldn't believe this, but uh, one of the best pieces of advice I heard from a director is you fix it in prep. You prep everything. And it doesn't sound like Disney does that. They work with a script that isn't complete. They'll fix it later. And they've gotten used to this throw it together process. That's why Endgame was what it was, right? Yep. It's where they shoehorned in Captain Marvel. They they were debating about whether or not to kill Tony Stark. I mean, they did. And they were even debating about, do we do a little tease at the end, a, a teaser scene where we recast the original Avengers with younger actors, like showing in a tease. They wouldn't have revealed them, but would have shown that like, they were plucked from an earlier time or something. And then they just, that's how they reboot the universe is young Avengers, but it's the original Avengers. So they, they, it, it just sounds like it's one of those things where the movies, they don't have them set. Even when they start, that's expensive. If you don't know the movie you're going to make, what do you, what are you doing? Uh, that's dude, where the money comes from. Uh, Reshoots and adding and yeah. nerd cookies just posted. Uh, okay. So, she Hulk budget was reportedly $225 million. Wow. And Nerd Cookies post by comparison, the budget for uh, Denis Villeneuve's Doom Part Two was uh, part one was 165 million. Doom Part Two is to 122 million. So that is $100 million more than Dune Two. She Hulk. Well, I'll say she with Dune Two was probably cheaper because they amortized the cost, meaning like a lot of the costs of making the first dune movie were it was design yep models you know once you have those you've spent that money you don't need to spend it you don't need to redesign anything you've designed aspects of the world that just rolls over into the next film so it's um it, that cost carries over you could say that the you know you could probably just combine the budgets because a lot of what was used in dune one will be in part two i, I can't wait for part two by the way. i can't wait yeah that thing cannot get why do they? I don't understand why they push it back. March. I mean, it's a weird how month. They, I mean, how come they didn't get a waiver, but Hunger Games got a waiver? I know that's so dumb. But like, 
yeah, but I, 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 it should be a big tentpole summer movie. What are the tentpole summer movies for 2024? Um, it has, uh, list. well, I'll for find. Disney in particular, after Wish comes out in 2022, they don't have a major release for four months, four and a half months. And that's going to be every studio now. So next year is going to look like, uh, like the first year after COVID where we have a right. big release like once a month. Or something like that. It like Hollywood wasn't fully back until about June of this year. And now and they just fucked them. They dropped a bomb on themselves. That's why it's like mind boggling. Um, but it really isn't. Like the WGA are filled with shitty writers, and there's gonna be fewer of them, but like they're the ones who created a lot of this problem. It was W, but there were far better negotiators than the Screen Actors Guild. The nanny's dumb. Uh, and they're being over dramatic and dumb actors. And, you know, I'm sure the writers, I mean, like, oh, we solidarity for the union behind the scenes are going, these dumb motherfuckers. You know, June is a wasteland. This is bizarre. I, I just put the link in the private chat to 2024. What's interesting is seeing that the original release dates for certain films like Snow White and Deadpool 3, among others, are just on the schedule with cross line out. Oh, dude. So I just so they've probably been working on post production. I I get they they've have been working on post production for Deadpool. We'll say Deadpool three, obviously. But here's the problem: the way Marvel does things, that post production could be scrapped completely. Yeah, depending on what happens, they still have principle to fix that. Doing Deadpool three is not coming out next year. It no, is no, not sure. coming out next year. I know some people are like maybe December. Nope. Nope. They'll push it to next summer, to summer of 2025, early, you know, March, April, May, somewhere like that. <clears throat> but do, Deadpool 3 ain't coming out next year. Nope, not at all. But you know what it is? Black Captain Falcon America. <laughs> is it, is it, it's not New World Order. They changed it because New World Order sounds scary. Uh, Brave New World. That's right, Brave New World. Because that sounds uh, much better. <laughs> I remember that novel. Uh, I read this is all unprecedented turn of fortune for a company that has enjoyed a nearly uninterrupted string of hits. Well, up until what? 2019. Right. Uh, I mean, Dr. Strange mom almost made a billion dollars. That's a hit. Uh, no way home made a lot of money. That was made by Sony. Still a hit. Guardians of the galaxy had good legs. That was a hit, but all the other stuff has lost money. Thanks to their bl bloated budgets. Independently producing its movies in 2008's Iron Man, that widely profitable run culminating in the 2.8 billion success of 2019's Avengers Endgame, a high watermark for the studio that has earned nearly 30 billion over 32 mil, uh, 32 films. I mean, that's, that's again, have they earned that much or generated that much? That is a major distinct distinction. Uh, replicated that kind of phenomenon is never e replicating that kind of phenomenon is never easy. However, the source of Marvel's current troubles can be traced back to 2020. Uh, 20. That's when co the COVID pandemic ushered in a mandate to help boost Disney's stock price with an endless tort of in interconnected. Mar They're blaming Chapik, by the way. This is straight from this book. They're blaming Chapik. I would just like to remind you that Bob Iger was still chairman of the board in 2020, and all of this shit was greenlit by him, the early stuff. Uh, not Chapik was an idiot, too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, under, uh, ushered in the mandate to help boost Disney stock price with an endless tort of interconnected Marvel content for the studio's fledgling streaming platform, D plus. I will also remind you that Kevin Feige in 2019 was put completely in charge of Marvel. There used to be Marvel publishing and merchandising, and then there was Marvel Studios. They all got put into one thing. Kevin Feige signs off on all of it. So that's when he was completely in charge. Uh, according to the plan, there would never be a lapse in superhero fare with either a film in theaters or a new television series streaming at any given moment. 
but the ensuing tsunami of spandex proved to be too much of a good thing. Or too much of a bad thing. Too much of a bad thing. And the demands of churning out so much programming tax the Marvel apparatus. Moreover, the need to tease out an interwoven storyline over so many desperate uh, shows, movies, and platforms created a muddled narrative that baffled viewers. Here is the blind spot the access media will always have, and that's why YouTubers exist. That's why there's you, you, you're here in the chat. They will never mention the fucking elephant in the room. The adherence to the message is the foundation that all these failures are built on. Period. Yes, there's oversaturation. Yes, there's creative bankruptcy. Yes, there's incompetent assholes. But when you have incompetent assholes with creative bankruptcy always relying on activism and the message, you know what? Marvel could have spanned out a bunch of good stuff with characters we actually gave a shit about. If you had the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, Silver Surfer, a real Namor, Doc, Dr. Doom, you'd probably have a better chance than Ironheart, Echo, America Chavez. You think that has something to do with it? Those are shitty characters based on identity politics. So your decision was poor to begin with. It was, it's the message. It's their adherence to the message. The access media will never, ever fucking bring this up because it would be admitting they were wrong. They were wrong. And we were right, which we have been I'll, the whole time. I'll, I'll add one other thing to that, Gary. I think the best talent that Marvel had fled the ship. They just left. Uh, James Gunn, uh, and that's complicated. The Russo brothers, Favreau, are they, are they involved in... Uh, phase four in the TV shows, it doesn't seem to be. Additionally, it was the rise uh, in power of, uh, what's her name? Victoria Alonzo. When you see the way she, first of all, what is she doing on the on the red carpet anyways? She's the woman who was the producer in charge of getting the effects done, right? Like that was sort of her big claim to fame. They boosted her up because she was she was a gay Latina woman. Well, that's speculation, Gary. That's uh, my speculation, and it's right. Well, I'll, I'll, who I'll cares just say, what the, who cares what the effects supervisor? Uh, what? That's uh, what I'm saying. Who gives who a cares? Shit? But we're going to elevate her because she's a gay Latina woman. I said Latino. Sorry, Latina. Uh, and uh, that's you know they put a woman in it and made her gay. That's what they did. That's exactly what they did on the red carpet. <laughs> they cast these people. They st they stopped for one. The Russo brothers and all the talent there saw the fucking writing on the wall, though. Well, we can never call this out publicly, but we're just going to say, oh, our job here is done. We're going to move on and give it to somebody else and get the fuck out of here while the going's good. You know? They know what's up. Yeah, I just, I, I feel like what they did is they elevated people into positions of power that had influence that did not result in positive response Kevin, from the audience. Kevin I mean, Feige said... We're going to make half the characters women. Was that a creative choice or was that a reactionary choice to the criticism? I, I, I think it was post Me Too thinking of and, and not thinking about the audience. Right. Uh, but look, especially at, at Feige's level among other or, or in middle management, half your job is making sure you can stay in your job. Right. I mean, it, it's it's. I'm not saying I feel sorry for any of these executives. I do not at all. I'm saying that a lot of their job is just sort of keeping the job. And that leads to decisions that you're, you're not keeping the audience in mind. You're keeping your ass in line. It's all CYA thinking, cover your ass. Right. And so that's what he was doing and not minding the thing and, and keeping the, not minding the brand in a right way. Cause I don't think we've ever seen, I cannot think of, any case where a brand was so beloved and fell so quickly. I cannot think of one like where the brand is. It's this incredible machine building up to this never to be repeated moment in 2019 with Endgame uh, of, of normies and longtime fans and whatever, all in a theater together, whatever you thought of Endgame, And, you know, look, there's a bunch of things I don't like about it, but the, but, to get to that point and and have that it was it was it was history and then to have the brand fall 
so quickly we've never seen it and we're looking at the marvels coming out we're looking at it's going to perform on it's going to perform uh poor, more, less than five nights at freddy's which is a movie by the way that is on peacock came, came out day and date on a streaming service on peacock but overperformed at the box office so because it was just a movie that kids like uh it's a property that my kid loved Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, it, and I guess it wasn't filled with messaging. I haven't seen it yet. We'll find out, but I guess that blows that whole day and date argument. But yes, Chris, yes, we have, we, we have two examples of massive IPs being completely destroyed within the same amount of time by the same company, Disney with Star Wars and Marvel. Bingo. All right. And then we had a bunch of other companies follow suit. We had Paramount think it was a bright idea to make a, like a woke fucking Star Trek. Star Trek was already pretty left leaning it was pretty inclusive and wait you know we'll just but it also relied on good storytelling and characters that's what it relied on first instead they decided to get rid of the good storytelling and characters and bring in just woke bullshit by a moron and uh and and it got proved right when that moron walked away from a show and brought in somebody who actually loves star trek they made something good they made something good you know broken clocks right twice a day you know, so we have two great examples of uh, money printing machines being utterly destroyed by the message, by the agenda. Where did Marvel turn south? Captain Marvel and, and Kevin Feige's edict and his reaction to being embarrassed by Wonder Woman and falling into that woke, the woke mind virus that Victoria Alonso had a lot to do with, had a lot to fucking do with. And then, of course, we had Kathleen Kennedy. I didn't know what the fuck she was doing. She was a producer raised up way beyond her ability. Name only. And has fucked Star Wars up from day one. From day one. Still has her job, by the way. Just got roasted by South Park because she's she's easy pickings right now. That's why South Park roasted her. She's easy pickings. You notice Kevin Feige wasn't in that episode. He'll probably be in another one. Right. But, um... And, and like... Di like Disney has to be fucking pissed <laughs> the, on that South Park episode uh, because it's, those of us will think that they went soft and they did at certain points. But if you're Disney, <laughs> you're fucking pissed that that a rival studio did that. And that's good. That means they're competing with each other because we haven't seen that. We've seen these giant corporations lockstep. It's like you fuckers, you're in competition with each other. Uh, that's when we started noticing that there's a through line here. Somebody's influencing all these corporations to go in the same direction, and we know who it is. They've come out and fucking said it. It's BlackRock, it's Vanguard, and it's a bunch of willing and able activists, and it's a bunch of risk-averse producers and actors who don't want their image to look bad who will just go along with it so they can keep their job. And it just ruined everything. That's all it did. Uh, where was I? Bum, 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 bum. The Marvel's machine. Okay. The Marvel's machine was pumping out a lot of content. Content. My favorite word. Did it get to the point where there was just too much? Yeah, there was too much shit. And they were burning people out on superheroes or the message. It's possible. It's possible. What do you mean? It's possible. <laughs> None of you people watch this shit, do you, in the Access Mini? You don't actually watch any of this shit. It was possible within Falcon and Winter Soldier. We knew after Black Widow and Falcon and Winter Soldier, this thing is dead. Falcon and Winter Soldier, which should have been a buddy cop thing, uh, passing the mantle to Bucky, turned into CRT, the TV show. And Black Widow was just a fucking hot mess. And, and it turned into, like, some really fucked up intersectional feminist message that it's okay if women subjugate women. That was the message I got at the end of the movie because the woman responsible for subjugating all the women was completely, uh, women was completely forgiven. Uh, the Mar oh, and, and then, of course, there's WandaVision, which ends with our hero 
enslaving men, women, and children and being let go by another hero who says they'll never know what you went through. Well, probably not because they were too busy being tortured. <laughs> I just, on that note, Gary, really interesting is I feel like they're uh, Hollywood doesn't know how to write heroes anymore. The no. people that are shepherding these franchises, what does heroism even mean anymore? Is it costume with superpowers? And the other thing is, like, I I'm really curious because you went through, like, the horrible story of the Marvels, like, leaked uh, what it is. I mean, it sounds beat for beat terrible, but I don't think there's really a way to, how do you write it out that Captain Marvel left the planet to fight on other worlds because that was more important while earth was going through a lot of things. She sort of just left in the nineties and that was it. She left nineties, uh, Nick Fury. And then she pieced out. You, it, it, you don't, you bring, you bring Carol Danvers down to get her power sucked out by rogue and call it a day. That's what you yeah. do. That's how you write yourself out of that one. But I mean, just the idea of heroism. What is a hero? To me, when you look at um, original Iron Man 2008, you look at Captain America, the first Avenger, when he, as that gangly skinny kid, jumps on the grenade or says, I can do this all day, that's a, he, he's not even in the costume. He doesn't even have the powers, but he has the heart of a hero. And Tony Stark goes through a whole journey of, having to deal with the demons of his past and the, and the, and also what he, what his company wrought, right? Like what his company created, he now has to deal with that directly. And it's, it's such a great take all the, and the problem is, is that the current Marvel just seems concerned with like, this happens and then this happens and then this happens. None of it is motivated by character and the early Marvel stuff when it was good was all motive. We got to know the characters. We got to know who they are. Um, I think it was baggage claim did a recent video on why these female heroes are not resonating. Well, cause they're because, not written by humans. Yeah. Because of the restrictions put on by DEI, by the right. message. You can't have a woman be a victim or she's being fridged. So they can't write right. that. They can't write that. You can't have a person of color be a bad guy unless they're a misunderstood antagonist. You know, yeah. instead of just being a bad guy. I mean, we're seeing so many, like, restrictions being put on by themselves because they let these act. This is where what the message ruined everything. It did. Yeah. And, it, you know, yes, there's other factors, but the main one, the one that keeps coming up, the one that keeps, like, Moon Knight. Why do we have to have the Scarlet Scarab in that at all? What the <laughs> fuck was she doing there? Just so she could say, are you an Egyptian superhero? That was fucking retarded. <laughs> But that's your adherence to the message. Moon Knight should have been about Moon Knight. They should have made it about Mark Spector. They should have based it on the Bill Sankiewicz drawn great fucking comics. Moon Knight's like a, a freaking Marvel Batman, you know, and instead they made it goofy and stupid, you know, uh, and uh, th that's that's the message. You know, we we can't. It, and also, Chris, being a hero is toxic. Being a, 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 a male hero like. Like Clint Eastwood is toxic. It's toxic masculinity. And it, turns out, it, turns and out it props up like unjust this. systems like the patriarchy. It turns out, I think that a, a lot of fans, uh, in particular women, like those kind of men. They like Steve Rogers, Captain America. They like Robert Downey Jr. and, and Iron Man. They they like that. And they're not... I mean, the thing is, is the tar here's here's how... I, I believe the Marvels is just is just failing is it's not appealing to its intended audience. They're not even interested. I think I showed you, uh, I think I DM'd you on Twitter or something, maybe something you want to show later, but uh, let's get to this article. And yeah, then sorry, we'll, we'll, sorry, we'll, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll get, we'll get uh, to that, to that clip you showed me. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's all good, man. It's all good. Okay. Cool. Uh, the Marvel machine was pumping out a lot of content, blah, blah, blah. It's Okay. Are people uh, burning out on superheroes? It's possible. So, listen, I think superhero fatigue is here, and uh, the fatigue is from Hollywood. They never wanted to try. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, where does fatigue come from? Too many bad movies. Well, but it's here. 
So we can't say it's not superhero fatigue. It's bad movie fatigue. Well, w fatigue is happening with superheroes because of bad movies. Well, they could just make a good one. Well, why don't they? They could. Uh, they're unwilling. They're unwilling to make a good movie. They're about to bring up Shang-Chi. I've said it a million times. If you made it a hard R, and not the other hard R, hard rated R, um, and you made it, uh, you made the, you cast a guy who looks like Bruce Lee because Shang-Chi is Marvel's Bruce Lee, and you you make a Quentin Tarantino-esque, or better yet, a 70s-esque homage to Kung Fu movies, it, it, it would have done better. It just like, would have done better. Like but, no. The dragon. but no, like, Shang-Chi has to get kicked in the balls by his own fucking sister in the first 15 minutes of his own fucking movie. That's the message. That's the fucking message. And you get the most effeminate beta to play him. By the way, it got banned in China. Yeah. <laughs> well, not banned. just that. In China, they thought that the actor Simu Liu was, they thought that uh, uh, the American company was making fun of Chinese by casting an ugly according to their standards. <laughs> no, no, this is true. It's true. No, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Uh, someone I know who speaks Chinese and it, they said that all the Chinese stories about this movie were like, why did they cast an ugly actor? So according to beauty standards for men in China, he's considered ugly. And his costume is shit. The it's, costume it's is terrible. It's stupid. And, and not just that, there are better movies that are of that sort of fantasy martial arts, um, you know, in that genre. But it would be like, it would, okay, take it from the Chinese point of view. It would be like if the Chinese made a, an American movie and cast an American actor that was not attractive and made a rah-rah, very American culture film, but it was all made by Chinese people. There's going to be some things lost in the translation, and that's that's why this movie did not get a release in China and, and Asian audiences. I don't, I don't think they really responded well. So yeah, I, I just think about it. Like look at it from their point of view, an American company made a film basically pandering to the Chinese audience. Uh, yeah. And, <laughs> and, it, and it bombed and it, it bombed and it wasn't released in China. Uh, they tried experiment with breaking in some new characters like Shang-Chi and the Eternals with mixed, re mixed results. No <laughs> results. There, there was nothing tight. mixed. Those movies lost money, which is the, uh, uh, that is the definition of a bomb of a flop. It lost money. Those movies lost money. Uh, with budgets as big as these, you need home runs. The Marvel's which opens in theaters on November 10th, uh, 9th, can't wait, uh, will struggle to get the ball past the infield, at least by Marvel's outside standards. The movie, which cost 250 million, no, it's over 300 million. That is some bullshit right there. Cost 250 million two years ago. And sees Brie Larson reprising a role as Captain Marvel is tracking to open seven, uh, to 75 million to 80 million, far below the 185 million Doctor Strange mom took in domestically in the debut weekend last year. Director Nia DaCosta, the Marvels, unites Larson's heroine with two super allies. Uh, blah, 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 blah. But instead of seamlessly building on the success of Captain Marvel, well, you can't. Because it, it wasn't a really, really a success on its own. We all know the truth of this. It wasn't really an a success on its own. And with all the stories we've heard of from Hollywood lately, I don't think it's that out of the realm of possibility that maybe they hire a third-party company to go buy blocks of tickets. Mm. Not saying it happened, but I wouldn't count it out. Just saying. Wouldn't count it out. Uh, so they, they instead of building on the success of Captain Marvel, this movie resulted in four weeks of reshoots to bring coherence to a tangled storyline that is basically that is based on multiple D plus shows that you didn't watch. Then eyebrows were raised again when DaCosta began working on another film while the Marvels was still in production. Post production. Post production. Post -production sorry. Yeah. 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 Uh, the filmmaker was moved to London earlier this year to begin prepping for Tessa Thompson's drama, Hedda, a representative for DaCosta declined to comment. If you're directing a $250 million movie, it's kind of weird for the director to leave with a few weeks to go. 
Yeah. It's not really. It's not for Marvel because that ha that's happened in almost every case of their D plus shows where the main creative forces either quits or leaves early on or is sidelined while oh. the post, the people in post basically finish the movie for you. Yeah. So I can tell you that I, I think Nia DaCosta has actually like a, a good argument here that the movie was taken away from her. She did her job as director, which was to tell the actors what to do, but then Marvel's going to make the rest of the movie for you. They don't do this with every director, but they definitely, it, it sounds oh, like they, they did it with her. the director they cast and did not hire. They cast That's exactly her. Right. That's exactly right. Uh, the Marvel's a scene, uh, it's release date moved back twice to once to swap places with Quantum Media, which was deemed further along. And again, when its debut shifted from July to November, to give the filmmakers more time to tinker, but the extra time didn't necessarily help. In June, Marvel, which traditionally only solicits feedback from Disney employees and their friends and families, took an uncharacteristic step of holding a public test screening in Texas. The audience gave the film middling reviews. So there it is. I reported way uh, a long time ago, uh, actually my buddy Drinker did too, that the Marvels was the lowest had the lowest test scores of any MCU film in its history. People By said the they didn't do a test screening. Oh, but they did. <laughs> I don't know if I should admit this, but uh, I've snuck into those test screenings before. Oh, of course. Uh -huh. snuck in. And I'll just tell you, the process has changed from when I used to sneak back in in the day and they'd give you a golf pencil and a form to fill out. They give the audience members... Uh, one, you can't take your phone in, so that's, you know, you have to lock it up. That's, you know, a given. But they give you an iPad mini, and it's in a case, and you're told to not open it. You open the iPad mini, and then you go through a series of questions. The first questions are demographic questions, age, sex, you know, all th those kinds of things. Um, movies you like and don't like, they kind of get a sense of you and then it's questions about the movie and they are very specific. I, I mean, I have to give kudos to these, the, uh, the, the test people in collecting their data. Um, you cannot whiz through this thing. I mean, it took me like 15 minutes to finish this. It was like, um, it, it, and this is, this is how, and, and you are, you are filling out like effectively a Google form that they'll have the data within minutes after the screening is over. So they've really, they've really um, improved this process from the old days of when I used to sneak into test screenings with this, with this iPad thing, it's, it's kind of crazy. So um, I completely believe it. What I'm shocked about is they, they did it in Texas and that this hasn't leaked out that no one, I'm sure maybe that's how the Reddit stuff. Well, uh, it did Chris. Is that okay? So, all right. So that yeah, I, I was told specifically. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> yes. good, good. <laughs> so yeah, I think you'd have a hard time. And by the way, when I did sneak in, I wore glasses and a baseball cap, so I wouldn't be recognized. My hair is my dead giveaway. So I try to like look like. Uh, I, yeah, I wasn't told it was in Texas. I was told there was a screening, okay. and it did really bad. Okay. And this was a while ago, so. uh I tweeted it. <laughs> I just said, hey. Uh, and, and yeah, it, it happened. But Marvel has never been in the business of being average. Kevin's real superpowers, his genius, has always been in post-production and getting his hands on movies and making sure they're finished strongly, the source adds. These days, he's spread thin. Oh, that's another thing we heard from this book and, and others and many others that he spread too thin. They relied too heavily on him. Uh, the genius part probably went to his head uh, a little bit. Uh, let's not forget it was Kevin Feige's idea to have Scarlet Witch turn Mr. Fantastic in his very first film in the MCU into spaghetti. Thought it would be funny. I tell you what, I rewatched that. I was... Um, I can't remember whose video I was watching. I rewatched that scene. It enrages me. Like more than any scene in anything yeah. Disney Marvel, what they did to Mr. Fantastic really sums up how they feel about their own characters. While they had a, you know, 
Maria Rambeau as Captain Marvel and girl Captain America uh, there. They blew up Reed Richards' head, made him out to an idiot. And, and that was th a lot of the general public. That's their first impression of Mr. Fantastic. It's fucking stupid. It was absolutely stupid. We're uh, never going to get a good on screen. No, dude. No. The stage. Like I, I just as like a longtime fan and just read the comics when I was a kid, like we're just never going to get the fantastic four as I envisioned no. them in my head reading those comics as a kid. It was, it was the greatest, weirdest, most different. I was also a Batman fan. So it was like Batman and the FF. That was my, that was my life as a kid. So, uh, Feige declined to comment for this story. Shocker. Yeah. Feige isn't the only person showing signs of strain. Marvel's entire VFX battalion includes staffers and vendors is struggling to keep pace with the never ending stream of productions. This past February, when the credits rolled for the world premiere of Kami mania shock <laughs> rippled through the uh, Regency village theater in Westwood over some shoddy CGI. There were all, there were at least 10 scenes where the visual effects had been added at the last minute and were out of focus says one veteran power broker who was there. Uh, it was I insane. I've never seen something like that in my entire career. Did you not watch She-Hulk? <laughs> Did you not watch She-Hulk? Uh, everyone was talking about it. Even the kids and executives were talking about it. The schedule <laughs> swapped. The schedule swap with the Marvels had left the Ant-Man sequel in a squeeze, pushing up its post-production schedule by four weeks and by four and a half weeks. Dude, I don't care if those were perfect special effects in Ant-Man. It sucked. It was a terrible fucking story. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the effects were bad, and it was a big sploogy mess, but that's not why the movie was bad. The movie was bad because it was a shitty story. Uh, you want to scroll up a little bit. Uh, film uh, Marvel films are known for coming out to the wire given Feige's ability to foam the runway and land the plane that way, says one executive familiar with how the company operates. But this level of unfinished was unprecedented and would be noted in scathing reviews when the tentpole with the $200 million budget opened 11 days after the premiere. Critics uh, weren't the only ones dismayed, fed up. With 14-hour days and no overtime, Marvel VFX workers voted unanimously to unionize in September, sparking an industry-wide trend. I mean, how many in-house VFX people do they have? I don't know, but uh, you you don't hear Can't this many. really about other places. It's always Disney. Yep. Uh, the year 2023 was the straw that broke the camel's back, says former Marvel Studios VFX assistant coordinator Anna George who appeared before the Congressional Labor Caucus on October 19th to testify that the studio's untenable deadlines and working conditions, the pay and longer hours at Marvel... By the way, why are we wasting my taxpayer dollars on fucking issues of visual effects in Hollywood? Work it out amongst your fucking selves. Uh, the pay and long hours at Marvel were the reason we had to start our unionization process there the conditions were completely unsustainable so now that you just guaranteed that they're going to farm them out to other countries that's all that's going to happen there'll be far fewer of you uh and listen you know disney did this to themselves too they are over they do overwork people they do um go work somewhere else disney's top brass including newly returned ceo bob Iger, was said to be uh apoplectic about marvel's vfx troubles is it, is it uh, apoplectic apoplectic there you go uh one month after the commie mania premieres debacle the guillotine fell on victoria alonso who oversaw the uh, oversaw the studio's physical production post-production vfx and animation while the reason cited for her abrupt firing was her unauthorized role as an executive producer uh on the oscar nominated film argentina 1985 insiders say disney was in uh, incensed the quality control on its Marvel productions was plummeting, particularly over her expanded TV front. The reason she was fired or the reason she got in trouble is she called out Bob Ch Chabik publicly over the Florida stuff. Ugh. It's right here in the book. That's the reason uh, she, she was told to shut the fuck up and keep her head down. And she didn't. And she got fired, but that's what 
what led to it. Uh, the VFX logjam had been evident for some time this, uh, with some final effects for such D-plus series as WandaVision. She-Hulk Attorney at Law inserted after their streaming debuts. Did you hear that? Let's read it again. The VFX logjam had been in, uh, evident for some time with some final effects for D-plus series as WandaVision and She-Hulk inserted after their streaming debuts. That is bizarre. I, 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 I... Wow. So uh, they were, they're, they're replacing, it's not a big deal to replace a file on a, a streaming service thing like that, but that's so weird that like they're working on it. It's kind of like, by the way, this problem is uh, really prevalent in the game industry. You can talk to Jeremy from geeks and gamers about this, where they deliver like games on disc that aren't finished and you must actually do a software update to even play the game. So they constantly are delivering unfinished games and doing patches and updates. Now they're doing this on the movie front. So this doesn't surprise me. And they're able to do it because these are debuting on streaming. Yep. Scroll, so. scroll down a little bit. Uh, Alonzo's attorney, they, they had a deal with Disney. And she's not going to comment. Believe me. They, they gave her a sweetheart deal to shut up. Uh, but turtle sources suggest uh, Alonzo was a scapegoat and point to She-Hulk VFX issues as a symptom to a deeper rot, namely a lack of oversight on script development in the original arc of She-Hulk, a flashback to star uh, Tatiana Maslany's uh, transformation into Doris Hulk character didn't take place until episode eight, the penultimate episode. But after Marvel's brain trust watched the footage, it realized the scene needed to happen in the pilot instead so the audiences could see more of Jer Jennifer character's backstory. That meant that the FX team was tasked with fixing the mess in post-production. The so-called VFX we see because of the half-baked scripts. Uh, says one person involved in She-Hulk. This is not Victoria. That is Kevin. And even above Kevin, those issues should be addressed in pre-production. The timeline is not allowing the Marvel executives to sit with the material. All the while, Marvel is bleeding money with a single episode of She-Hulk costing some $25 million. <laughs> one episode! $25 million for that shit! <laughs> these are the motherfuckers telling us how to live our lives telling us not to fly in planes telling us to buy electric cars telling us not to own land and eat bugs and these motherfuckers spent 25 million dollars on fucking one episode of She-Hulk <laughs> Jesus dwarfing the budget of a final season episode of HBO's Game of Thrones <laughs> <laughs> But without a similar zeitgeist bang. Oh, it was, just not the one they wanted. That was a zeitgeist gangbang. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the August 2022 series premiered at the El Capitan Theater. Foreshadowed what was to come six months later at the Kami Mania bow. The She-Hulk special effects were out of focus in multiple scenes. There are signs that the flood of production is leading people to tune out. I'm not prepared to call it a permanent fall. I am. It already happened. They're past it. They're in apathy phase, but let's go on. But based on the numbers that go with Marvel podcasts, Marvel-based articles, friends who do Marvel-based video coverage, all of these numbers are significantly down. Wait a minute. I thought they didn't care about all that stuff. I thought they did. That wasn't a proper metric for all that stuff. Oh, now it is. Interesting. And they're right. Interest in Marvel across the board is way down because there's a point where people just stop giving a fuck. They're like, okay, I was angry. I'm going to move on. Goodbye. So we are in the apathy phase. The failure has already happened. I talked about it in a video I released a little over a week ago called Why Marvel is Failing. Because they repeated the same mistakes as their publisher. That's why. Why is Marvel failing? The message. There's a lot of other factors, but that's the foundation. They're slavish adherence to a political message that has nothing to do with Marvel superheroes. 
Marvel-based articles, friends who do Marvel-based video coverage. All of these numbers are significantly down, says Joanna Robinson, co-author of the New York Times bestseller MCU, The Reign of, of Marvel Studios, who is writing, who is a writer and a podcaster at Ringer. By the way, uh, that book basically repeats articles and known information for a long time. Adds a bit of context to it, though. There's some interesting context. But it also reads like it was uh, it was trying to it was basically trying to separate Kevin Feige from any culpability. It's almost like he signed off on it. They don't really go after him or Iger at all. Uh, da, 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 Marla, who is writer and podcaster at Ringer? The Ringer. Uh, the quality is it the Ringer still around? Wasn't that on ESPN for a second? The Ringer? The Ringer, yeah. The guy who runs The Ringer was on ESPN for like a minute. And they tried to like cross culture, pop culture and sports. Um, but it's it's like it's like the fucking Atlantic, dude. Yeah, it's it's just some uh faux pseudo intellectual highbrow shit. Um, the quality is suffering. In 2019, at its peak, if you put Marvel Studios in front of something, people were like, oh, that brand is uh, means quality. That association is no longer the case because there have been so many projects that have felt half baked and undercooked. What a bigot. A public criticism, as public criticism mounts, Feige is pulling the plug on scripts, projects that aren't working. Case in point, the Blade reboot with Marsh, uh, Marshala Ali signed on for uh, the epic. Eponymous? I know this word. Eponymous? Eponymous. Ep Role of a vampire. Uh, things looked promising for 2023 release date, but the project has gone through at least five writers, two directors, and one shutdown six weeks before the production. One person familiar with the script. Uh, permuti permutations. Did I get that right? Permutations says the story at one point morphed into a narrative led by women and filled with oh. life lessons. <laughs> they put oh. a chick in it and made her gay. <laughs> lame and gay. <laughs> and lame. lame. Lame and gay. Oh, shit. And morphed into a narrative led by women and filled with life lessons. <laughs> Oh my god, it sounds terrible. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. And Mahershala Ali, I mean, he's won an Oscar. He won an Oscar for Green yes. Book. Which was, he was criticized because... Blade I, was relegated to the fourth lead. <laughs> you mean, just like every other fucking project that's come out after Endgame. A bizarre idea considering that the studio had two-time Oscar winner Ali on board. Well, I mean, look what they've done with Wheel of Time and Rings of Power. I mean, are you right. surprised? Ugh. Amid reports that Ali was ready to exit over the scripts, Feige went back to the drawing board and hired Michael Green, Oscar-nominated writer of Logan, to start a new speculation around uh, town is that the studio is looking to make the film now slated for 2025 on a budget of less than $100 million, which they could easily do. Uh, a deviation from Marvel's big spending strategy. A big deviation. And, and just so you know, with, when it comes to actors, like with this, they can be petty. They will count their number of lines. Yes. They will literally count the lines that they have in relation to other uh, other actors on, on the film just to kind of like go, well, how come this person has this or what? Shouldn't I have this line? This is a really good line. That sounds like something my character would say. And something like Mahershala, he's like, I think he's earned the right to be able to push back. So I think it's actually, it's a good thing that, uh, he's involved to just say, "Hey, like, I, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to fix some of this." So, I don't know. I, I, I've always liked him in things, but I don't know if he's one of those actors that actually knows. I mean, maybe he is because obviously he's he's selected projects that have, um, you know, been uh, very positive for his career. So. God, we uh, this is a long fucking article. Yeah, All right. no so we're just going to read th this part. I mean, this gives you the gist. Scroll down a little bit. This is, okay. So 
With Iger publicly acknowledging the downside, the downside of a Marvel TV glut that diluted focus and attention, that was just shit. If all of that <laughs> stuff was, was, was fucking mediocre to good, I would say even mediocre, you'd be fine. Yeah. But it wasn't mediocre. It was shit. It's all been shit. Even WandaVision, which started out good, turned to shit. Uh, the keepers of the comic book empire, it's not a comic book empire anymore. Comic books are a blip on their radar. They're lost leaders. Comic books mean nothing to these people. Are considering some more dramatic moves. Sources say there have been talks to bring back the original gang for an Avengers movie. This is Variety, by the way. This is some, some, this is some, some, some kooky uh, pooper scooper. This would include... Reviving Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man and Scarlett Johansson uh, as Black Widow. I don't think she'll come back, bro. No. No. Uh, both of whom were killed off in Endgame. That shouldn't, uh, that shouldn't be a stumbling block in, block in comic books. Beloved characters are often killed off to be resurrected later. This is true. But the studio hasn't... But Okay, well, let me finish reading this, and I'll tell you why this is a bad idea. Uh, but the studio hasn't yet committed to the idea. If they were able to bring those actors back, it wouldn't come cheap. Sources say Downey Jr.'s upfront salary for Iron Man 3 was around $25 million. And remember, uh, lots of criticism, a deserved criticism for Iron Man 3. Made a billion dollars. Made a billion dollars. So, um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will be talking about this. I'm sure I'll probably put this in a video and we'll get to the rest of it later. We're on time. But uh, why that's a bad idea is bringing them back for one move, more movie accomplishes what? It gives you a hit, but what about the future? You're still exactly. making these big events. Your hits used to come through. Iron Man 3, for example, made a billion dollars. And it was just about Iron Man. You need to get back to making a Blade movie uh, and rebuild it. Events happened all the time in comics, and then they brought it down. After the big galactic event, they went down to the streets for a little while. They rebuilt back up, went to another event. That's how you keep it going. Um, you do it by recasting. You can't. You bring everybody back. I'm sure the movie will do great. And as much as I love No Way Home, it was a gimmick. No Way Home was a gimmick. Toby Maguire brought in all that money. Andrew Gar Garfield sealed the deal, but Toby Maguire brought in that billion dollars, baby. That was Toby. And not just that. Like the the idea of recasting, you know, that happens in the comic world. They don't. I mean, you're not recasting, but we, what you're doing is you're. You're re you're reintroducing you're, a new creative team, which is the writer and the illustrator. It changes the book a lot. Like you, you kind of got to get used to it a little bit when there's a new writer artist team and then, and then really good things can spring from different runs. And that's kind of what a recast would be in the world of movies. It'd be, you know, like getting a different creative team. They could do kind of different, you know, sort of, Sh a different take on Iron Man, and that would be interesting for a the, different the, type of actor. The you know? bench is the bench, and will always be the bench. The backup quarterback will always be the backup quarterback. Right. Okay? And that's what they did. They tried to have the MCU taken over by the Z-listers, and uh, it didn't work. Big shocker. Yeah. Um, you want to pull up that picture uh, that uh, of the movie theater? Here's a... Uh, <laughs> No, this is from Alan Ng, who's watching, by the way. He's Hi, watching. Alan. Hey, Alan, what's going on? Hey, your daughter's here. Um, Hi. This is this is Alan Ng's seat <laughs> on opening night in Orange County. I don't know what theater in IMAX for the Marvels. He just got his ticket. By the way, tickets have been on sale for weeks. <laughs> so this is Alan's seat at the theater. Make so, sure you get your ticket. Hurry your up. Ticket They're going fast. <laughs> sit next to Alan. Uh, there's plenty of room. Wow. He just picked it right in the middle. I think it's so funny. I know. Um, I never sit in the middle. I sit towards the end. I always sit on the yeah. end of the aisle so I can like quick exit. Oh my God. On the app, it still says social gap. They're not doing that anymore. Nobody cares. Fuck off. Mm. Uh, I know it's so dumb, but that's still in their app. They need to update that app. I think this might be the Regal. It's, it's not the AMC. It looks different, but uh, yeah, there's Alan's seat. It's going to it's November 9th, IMAX in Orange County at an undisclosed theater. Alan's wow. gonna well, he can he can actually put his feet up on the chair in front of him. No one's gonna care. Mm -hmm. So there you go. There you go. 
Oh my God. And we're like, cause Alan and I have been talking about this. Like, why are we getting all these invites to movies that are opening in late November, December, but nothing for the Marvels. That's just never happened. At least they would invite us and say, all right, well you're invited, but here's the date you're going to see it. We know we're screening it at the last minute. No one has seen, I don't know anyone who's seen, I know one person who's seen the Marvel, but I don't know that this source is necessarily reliable. Uh, yeah, I know. I know somebody who's seen you know, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You and I. Okay. Yeah, we 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 know somebody who's seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that. But what version did they see? Well, that's true. Did they uh, see the twenty eight percent version or the? 33? This is the person who told us they're going. I mean, they they didn't say it in so many words. What I'm paraphrasing. They're going for a Guardians of the Galaxy fun type of vibe, except minus the interesting characters, the better writing, and James Gunn, and uh, Chris Pratt, and everyone else. And the classic music, that music, it just seems lazy. Oh, I can't wait music. to hear Brie Larson sing. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh. <laughs> uh, the Hot Grape Studio for $20 says Bungie laid off several employees, many good ones, including the composer Michael Salvatore. It has been confirmed this was not from Sony, but entirely Bungie related to the strike, the beginning of the end of for gaming, maybe, or maybe related to their stupid post from earlier this year, that weird Latinx fucking thing they did. I mean, like, they need to let that Latinx thing go. They really do. That shows you how out of touch Hollywood is. Like, that is not a popular statement, Latinx. It's It's gay. It's super gay. Uh, Smooth, the DJ, has gifted five neurotic memberships for $25. Thank you, Smooth. Nice. And you mentioned uh, something in chat. Uh, it, it is incredible to, to, to see the access media, like, criticize Marvel like this. And we did get some, like, they're considering bringing back the original Avengers. <laughs> but, I mean, would they bring back the original actors to play the – I don't know. You could do – It would. here's an interesting – a story that I would love to see. What happened to Steve Rogers when he went back in time? Now, what What is that story? I know he danced with his girl. Fucking, he ignored 9-11 and the Kennedy assassination, all kinds of shit. What, no, well, nothing, but he ignored a lot of shit. He ignored 9-11. Uh, he, he lived through a time – Right, he got old. Yeah, well, yeah, he was lived through the Kennedy assassination too. So there's a I lot mean, of historical things he sat on the sidelines for that he could have stopped because he had powers. You could tell another Captain America story in World War II. Too much of that movie. Was you know what? No, no. Have them find the the stuff that they. Isn't it interesting that they retconned all of Captain America? Hang on. Uh oh, here we go. Beating the shit out of commies. <laughs> Right. They, they they retconned all of this out of Marvel Comics and everything of him beating the shit out of commies. Now, if you want to make a, a whole series of him beating the shit out of commies, okay, I'm there. But but there's there's other stories that could be told. And I I, I my I and I I predict I think that uh Cap, Chris Evans Captain America is going to be in that new upcoming movie. Yeah. At least in some I, I, we, we all knew they'd be back in Secret Wars. I don't think that's a secret. And Secret Wars, maybe is the th maybe they just pivot the Kang thing. They maybe wrap up. Yeah. There's a way, like, because what what are they building up to? We knew with Thanos what they were building up to, right? Like that was it's the Infinity Stones and the Infinity Gauntlet and all that. What are they building up to? There's still that like the end of Shang-Chi. No one remembers this. They're built where they have like Captain Marvel and Bruce Banner are there yeah. and they're talking to him. Well, Chris, like, did you read the Secret War? Not the one from the eighties, the good one, the shitty one from like two thousand sixteen. Okay, they're they're building up to Battle World. They're okay. building up to Battle World, so all the universes are going to collapse on each other, and then randos from uh, like you know maybe some surviving X Men uh, from the Fox. And and surviving superheroes are going to fight on Battle World uh, for the sake of the universe, and it's just it's fucking stupid. It's stupid. Multiverses are lame. They are. Yeah. They, multiverses are lame. Uh, Duke Devil ninety five is gifted ten neurotic memberships for fifty. <laughs> Matthew Faxine for one hundred. Canadian Peso said, hello, y'all. Hope you all had great fun at Halloween yesterday. I know I did. I got to watch one of my favorite films, Halloween 4, Return of Michael Myers. Thank you all for what you do and sharing your stories. And I hope one day I will be able to do what you guys do. I hope you do, too. 
Matthew, do it. All you need is a little brio. I started out with a little brio and a fucking snowball mic. <coughs> that's what, that's what I, I, I'm about to change mics, by the way. To this, what? Oh. Well, this super expensive one I got is great, but those little travel ones are the same technology made by the same people for a third of the cost, and they're better. They're just better. All oh, the road ones. The the yeah the that well the the not road mic the one I take on the road. I forgot the name of the brand, but uh, Garrett turned me on to it, and they use it at the Blaze. But it's it's the same company, and they're they're you know here. So this is a good one, but it's like a five four or five hundred dollar mic. And the only reason I bought it because everybody was getting sure mics because of Joe Rogan, and I just didn't. I wanted something different. So Something I got what, different. yeah. So I got the mic Anthony Cumia used. That's all. That that was that was I'll my thought process. I'll give you hundred for it, Gary. I'll I'll give it to Alan for Christmas. Okay. Why don't we just <laughs> give it to Alan for Christmas? Let's give it to Alan. I was for supposed Christmas. to give this to you anyway. So Alan's Alan's watching actually, and he said that they still enforce at at Regal. So I was talk chatting with him. He's I won't even wash it. Right, you know, wash it. I'm not gonna wash it. Or I'm gonna Ebola. send it to, <laughs> yeah, with my Ebola and, <laughs> and COVID all over it. Bring it with <laughs> you. Uh, LA Comic Con is coming up. Oh, yeah, we should yeah. talk about that briefly. Yes, uh, so we this is happening, it is confirmed. We are going to be at Los Angeles Comic Con. There, uh, Chris Gore has got three panels. I think I might be on a two. Um, on two of them. I'm on two of them. Uh, who else is going to be on those panels, by the way, Chris? Uh, Alan will be on the panel. Polly from Latino Slant. Um, maybe there's some maybes. Oh, Danica is going to be Danica. Danica. Yeah, yeah. Danica Comic Book Girl Comic. 19. She's going to be on. How did so, her Kickstarter finish out? Uh, over 50,000. Oh, nice. Good. And that was her, her goal. So good for her. Well done. I was watching her. It was paint. She was painting yeah. on a stream. She's pretty good. Yeah, she is. She's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, that'll be, that's going to be fun. So if you guys can make it to LA comic-con, we'll be there. Um, will we do, I don't know. I'll try to figure it out. I don't know yet. Do I can't meet up, maybe do, do like an impromptu a, meet yeah, up. like an impromptu meetup. We'll figure something out. I don't think I can rent out a bar or anything, but, uh, maybe, be crazy. maybe we'll just meet somewhere. There um, could be a place you could just tell people to go to a specific, we'll, we'll talk. You and I will if talk. you own a bar or a <laughs> Uh, in LA. In LA, okay. and you want to make a bunch of money because our crowd drinks a little bit. Uh let me know. Cause, <laughs> cause they'll yeah, wipe yeah. you, they'll wipe you out of all your alcohol. All you have to do is just give us a place, you know. There you go. Um I we I don't charge though. So it, it can't be a situation where I charge yeah. at all. Email Gary at nerdrotic.com. Yep. Yeah. Uh Magnum, uh, but yeah, so it's uh the dates of the con are uh one month from today. Yeah. One month from today. It's it December 1st through the 3rd. So it's Friday, December 1st through the 3rd on the weekend. Our panels are on Saturday and Sunday. So maybe a meetup. Uh, I don't know. There also might be a big party happening. I'll um, let you know about that. And I'll cool. try to get. X-ray girl. You're going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be the there. Yet, but I'm going. And this will be my first time going to LA. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Oh, so this wow. This will be interesting. This is the first trip that I've ever taken that I'm actually nervous about my safety. Well, have you ever <laughs> seen... I've been around the world. Have you? Yeah, I, you should be. Um, have you, you ever be. seen Escape from Los Angeles? No. Well, it's worse. So... Oh. <laughs> it's worse. Yeah. It's actually Yay. worse. It's, it's, a, it's a fucking hellhole. It's a shithole. Sorry, Chris. Uh, Pasadena is really nice. It's like a little oasis. That's probably where we'll hang out. But L.A. Yeah. is a tent city shithole filled with fentanyl Sounds zombies like run by punk. retards. But That's I get to meet right. my dad. Yeah. You get to meet your dad. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to meet Alan Ng. The Ng the Merciless. Ng meet. the Merciless. <laughs> he has to cosplay it. He has to be Ng the oh Merciless. Oh, my God. Dude. Yeah. We did. We did. I saw. Uh, on our, I saw. Our that was great. It was stupid. I that, know. But it was fun. The, no, it's great. The 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 okay. very low effort made it even better. He just put some <laughs> I know, I was ball out cap like, on. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> so I, I guess it works. I love it. Uh, Magnum Norris for twenty dollars says, "I love you, Al Gore. When will you fly to uneducated parts of the world and preach to them that they deserve access to energy? Love, Attack of the Cock. All right, Attack wow. of the Cock. Wow." 
Well, I'm going to be. That's the porn I, I actually, version. I'm going to Grand Rapids Comic Con this weekend. I'm flying out tomorrow. I'll be there on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, doing a couple panels there and hanging out. And I'll be bringing. What? You're going to be so of- close to me. I'll be close. I'm in Michigan, like the middle of the Isn't state. It? So yeah, we're going to be in Wisconsin in like a couple weeks, dude. Yeah, I, 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 I know. Uh. V- Vice for twenty dollars says, "Did you hear of the several year sentence some eBay executives got for harassing a man and his wife for writing a criticism of eBay on his on his newsletter? Members of eBay had them stalked and sent them threats." No, what? Ooh. Oh my god! I yeah. Okay, right. I can't go on the tangent now, but just executives in Silicon Valley. Programmers, programmers, all of them. Dude, the debauchery is next level. It's it, the, the drugs. Uh, when I was at the comic shop, there was a thing called the Google Mafia. And it was oh. it was rich programmers uh using that uh the silk, the silk road, the the you know, the the bad internet that got in trouble. A lot of them were were deep into that. And doing some crazy shit. Crazy fucking shit. Maybe a book will be written about that someday. <laughs> Cause that's a fucking that would be a good like Martin Scorsese movie. It would. <laughs> it would, it be. would. I don't I don't know. It's weird when you look at the types of topics. We're talking Hollywood. We're talking running women, running drugs, running guns, like the worst of the worst. Worst of the worst was happening. Yeah. Uh the grizzly. Which reminds me, I'll read the super chat, but don't let me forget about the Grizzy X-Ray Girl. I got to bring this up. God, I wonder what I'm going to do without Hollywood in my life. What do I have to look forward to except Star Citizen, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, the upcoming Doom game, Stalker 2, Mario versus Donkey Kong. Oh, no. Mario versus Donkey Kong? That kind of sounds... I love Nintendo. (laughs) The Grizzly, thank you for the $20. The Grizzy, Grizzy... Uh, I, I love this. This is a good YouTube channel. Um, he collects the reactions from those reaction channels, makes some good fun content. Uh, according to, let me double check this. According to as, oh man, did he re- respond to me? No, he didn't. Uh-oh. I asked him to come on the show, but then I, I got busy. So did you check? According to as... Uh-huh. Has been demonetized. Are you fucking kidding me? Sorry, as a Mahler. I, I asked him to come on the show, and then I got busy, and they're probably like, "Yeah, we're gonna come on." And I, <laughs> fuck. They what me. happened? Well, as is, is, is pretty. I mean, he does I, game I, stuff. I, I don't know what. No, Grizzy, the Grizzy, Grizzy has been demonetized. Not as oh, oh, Grizzy, oh. as told me, Grizzy has been demonetized. So the guy who does this reaction, which is completely transformative. It's just a compilation. There shouldn't be anything that would demonetize him. So I think he just got targeted. I think he can fight it. Uh, but uh, support Grizzy. It's a good channel. Show some support on uh, on Twitter, and uh, I'll retweet it later at going to YouTube. He should not be demonetized at all uh, and has provided a lot of people with a lot of laughs. Listen. If you're going to go out there and be a fake reactor and cry over like really just inane content, you put your, you put yourself out in the world. I understood this when, even when like I started, right. I didn't think anybody would watch, but I'm like, well, anything I do now is out forever. So shit, I probably shouldn't have said my full name. I probably should have been anonymous, but that stuff was gone from day one. Uh, and you just realize, and my first comment do basically said, we suck balls. And that was our first comment, right? And, you know, it's like, that's the way it goes. You got to be yeah. able to take the heat. If you're going to be like a weird reactor, be a weird reactor. Have no shame to your game. Don't give a fuck. Don't give a fuck. That's it. I mean, I'm not saying don't do it. If it, if it makes you happy, I don't really care, but people are going to roast you. That's part of life. You're not protected from that. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't be protected for that. That's what builds character. And you know what? If you're confident in yourself and your ability, it won't bother you. It but, will not bother you, know, you. But, you know, Gary, there's not a channel called Nerdrotic Exposed yet, but there are other channels. 
Something. There are. Oh my god. John Campy <laughs> said the dumbest thing the other day. Okay. He was talking about Rachel Uh-oh. Zegler, and he's like, I he was talking about Snow White getting delayed, and he goes, you know, you know how he is. He starts out with that high pitch, you know. I can't even get that high. He goes, you know. He starts out like super high pitch, but uh, essentially to make a long story short, he said what Rachel Zegler said about uh, Snow White being outdated and everything was absolutely right. He completely agrees with it. What? Because of course he does. Fucking Canadians, man. <laughs> except for the cool, <laughs> except for the cool ones. Except for the yeah. cool ones. <laughs> He voted for Trudeau. You know he's a big Trudeau backer. Uh, I just, you know, and he can't believe that. He can't believe going out and di- going out and disrespecting the source material of Snow Snow White while you're promoting a Snow White remake. Not even John Campia is dumb enough to actually think that that was a smart statement. I call bullshit. And and it also like it, it shits on fans of the original animated yes. story. I mean, I saw. I, look, I'm out for Halloween last night. I'm seeing. I saw people dressed as Snow White. Saw young kids dressed as the in the original old school Snow White outfit. Yeah, like that's it's still timeless. Kids. It's ti- it's timeless for a reason, dude. It's a Disney tracks- animated movie that I've watched. It's, I, it's among the shortest too. It's like sixty. Minutes. Yeah, I, I like. There's. I, Jungle Book, Robin Hood, Snow White, uh, Fantasia. I was on acid. Fantasia is uh, so awesome on acid. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of. I think that's it. Aladdin. I seen Aladdin. Yeah, it's entertaining. I like yeah, Aladdin. I, I uh, Jungle Book is great. It's fucking great. My kid loved it. But um, yeah, I'm just. I've never been a big. I'm a Warner Brothers cartoon guy. I've always thought Disney was like too, yeah, yeah. I've just always been a Warner Brothers cartoon guy, never been a Disney guy ever on anything other than I used to like Disneyland when I was a kid. But Roadrunner, Coyote, like Bugs Bunny, effing with like Daffy Duck, like that They ruled. They were great. They they were irreverent, you know, whereas I thought it was not like Disney stuff. While I liked it, it was milk toast. It was really milk toast. Once I reached a certain age. Oh, wait, Mickey and the Beanstalk was good. I liked that as a kid. Mickey and the Beanstalk. That used to be like a record that you could read along with too. Oh, that my wow. gram my Grammy would play me at Christmas time. When I was a little baby a thousand years ago. Uh go write a book. Thanks to the uh thanks for the segue, Gary. I did write a book and I'd love to have the fellowship support. It's called Twilight Wolf on Indiegogo. Twilight Wolf. And this is from JT Wrights on the Streamlab side for fifty dollars, by the way. So again, that book is called Twilight Wolf. If you want to support the Iron Age and uh, a fellow member of the chat, go take a look at it. And if you like it, support it. Uh, I'd love to hear the panel's thoughts if you get a chance to look it over. It depends on how long the book is. If it's a tome, I can't make promises like that. But if it's like a little book, okay. Dude, it, like I, I read a single comic book in one reading, right? Uh, it it's it it gets it gets a little much after a while. Like Eric's like Eric's comic, you know, both of his comics took because the, the, they're fucking big. That you know, usually a comic you can read it in 15, 20 minutes. Pew. Yeah. Not Eric's comics. You got it. They, like they're but that see that works. That's that's like your heavy metal type of publishing. It's once every quarter we're gonna put something out, but it's gonna be worth it. Um. That's how independent comics can work, and that's how they can change. By the way, if they like the monthly model's tough, it's tough. Some people can do it though, but the monthly model is tough. But if you want to stay in the zeitgeist, you can't release even a hundred page comic book once every two years. Nobody's going to remember it. It's not going to, it's not going to have any impact at all. It sucks. It could be the greatest comic book ever re- written, but it's still going to have attrition with the fan base because it's just too much damn time between comic books. Eric releasing something every basically quarter. It's a very smart idea. I think everybody should kind of emulate that. A lot of fucking work. It's a lot of work, but, uh, you know, if everybody could do comic books, then everybody would. It's a very special talent. And part of that talent isn't just the talent. As we've said, you can have all the fucking talent in the world, but if you don't have the mindset, if you don't have the mindset and the will 
to work. And and because it's you know you would th- you would like in a perfect world it's just the talent everybody should just rely on talent no you have to have business acumen you have to be able to market yourself uh, and you have to have fucking personal drive to want to do this shit you have to actually care you have to care there's a lot of people with tons of talent who don't give a fuck how many times have we seen that in sports Where, like the most talented player in the world just wasn't into the, for whatever reason wasn't into the game and it might not even be his fault maybe his dad burned him out maybe his coach burned him out maybe he just didn't like it. But we saw that, you know, Barry Sanders, man, one of the most talented people in the world, just walked away. Just walked yeah. away. Had enough. Peace out. Didn't like the owners. Walked away. Could have played easily four more years. Um, and that happens a lot in comics. There's a lot of comic book artists who are really talented. They love comics. They just don't like drawing comics anymore. And they haven't really, That has. there's no self-acceptance there. But you can tell. You can tell. That's why so many of them were at, like, when Hollywood came around, they're like, oh, an out. An out. Uh, for the people who think Robert Downey is on our side, just watch the rebooted Perry Mason show. There, he and his wife were in charge of, uh, made his secretary a lesbian, his private investigator black, full of identity politics. Buford T. Justice for $19.99. Uh, Buford. That's never been a secret. Robert Downey Jr. is a liberal, is a liberal. What I respect about Robert Downey Jr. is he has come back from the brink. So he's actually seen some shit, and he came back, whatever his politics are. Yeah, he's been in a uh, pro-vote, uh, well, but it was actually a pro-Democratic Party. It was backed by the Democratic Party. He's been in those, those cringe videos before. Chris Evans is worse. Chris Evans is far worse. Yeah, but... Chris Evans was trying to start some organization to heal division. I don't know how well that's I don't going. know how he does that when he acts like Mark Ruffalo when he's asked about stuff. I see no difference between the two. Yeah. Like, he said some fucking retarded shit. And you know what? That's fine. If you if you don't like a candidate and you're asking people to vote, that's not gonna, that doesn't bother me at all. It's when you start calling the candidate that you don't like their backers idiots, Nazis, evil people that's yeah. where i start having a problem that's where i have the problem it's like oh you know those these are your potential customers and you know that's half of america you know like that's my mom you know yeah. fuck you call my mom a nazi uh they could have mined mom's base by the way both my moms are based uh they could have uh they could have mined uh this is a tutorial slave Two parts for 30 British pounds. Proper money. They could have mined the five-year gap with movie releases for Inhumans, Warlock, Nova, Ronin, Black Widow, Aftermath, with Nat and Steve leading the new Avengers. Yes, all day long. They could have introduced the Fantastic Four and Namor. They could have given Hulk, they could have not been cheap and given Hulk his own fucking movie. Isn't it weird that Joss Whedon made the best Hulk movie. Joss yeah. Whedon. Joss fucking yeah. Whedon made the best Hulk movie. Made the best Black Widow movie. Uh, you want to know why? Why? Joss Whedon read comic books. <laughs> and I also think that Joss Whedon, whatever you, you can critique him, he is really good when it comes to character. Yep. The stories are character driven. And that's what in a nutshell, that's what that's what Marvel has lost. The stories aren't character driven anymore; they're just event driven. This happens, then this happens, and this happens. Yep. And that's and that's stu- and it, it's the same with Star Wars too. Nothing is motivated by character; it's all motivated all right. by well, this thing has happened. I I actually got to run, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that I mean, I am going to, I am gonna urinate on myself if I just someone's oh. gonna clip that if I don't get out of this chair. Um. I didn't mean to bring that up. I'm just saying I have had to pee for the last. I should have just gone and said, just go. Just go. go. We got to finish this up and get out of here. But thanks for letting everybody know the internet's forever, Chris. Exactly. All right. Uh, First of all, thank you, Gary. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks, girl. I'll see you in LA in a month. Um, uh, But I'll be on the nooner next week. We're going to, we'll have fun on the nooner next week. And I'm doing, the film threat, uh, Hollywood on the Rock show in 22 minutes. 
So let's see how fast I can I can uh, make lunch. All right, so, go make lunch. Uh, Thanks, Chris. Care, everybody. Bye, Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Love you all. Later. All right, we'll get to part two of this tutorial. Slave uh, says they could have mined the five-year gap with movie releases for the Inhumans. Uh, uh, New Asgard, The Professor, Thor and Hulk double feature. I, I wouldn't have done. I wouldn't have gone straight to Professor Hulk. I, I, I would have gone to the Gray Hulk, but that's me. Mister Fix It. I'd have done Mister Fix It. I had done a lot of stuff before I went right to the professor. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. reincorporating Coulson and company into the MCU and something like Thanos' Servant of Death, Eternity, etc., taking him uh, to task for the snap. There's a lot of stuff they could... So, Mephisto is a great pre-villain or a villain that you could have combined with Galactus and Doctor Doom. Uh, Duke Devil 95, as a former criminal prosecutor, I doubt majors will serve any time if convicted. I don't think so either. Uh, I'm more curious about the antics of his legal team. Regardless, majors' reputation is too damaged for Disney to rely on him for, as the new Thanos. You're absolutely correct. And his legal team has been dumb. They came out and said, uh, we have uh, evidence that will exonerate us, but now that we have the written report, it's, yeah. I don't think the guy's going to do any time. I think he was in a, a, a bad relationship. Right. And and she was trying to grab his phone. Um, here's some relationship advice for uh, from a dad. Don't be in a relationship where you a need to hide your phone from your girlfriend or wife. OK, just don't be in that relationship. If you have to hide your phone because you're cheating on her, break up with her. Have fucking testicles. Break up with her. Or don't cheat. There you go. And don't be in a relationship with the kind of girl who wants to sneak and look at your phone all the fucking time. There's, there's, a, there's a great option in any relationship, a door, that you can walk through and leave any fucking time you want. There you go. That's my relationship advice. That's pretty good. Yeah. You know. It's logical, but people don't use it. No, they think they're trapped in relationships and it's the only one is for me and it's, it's, it has a lot to do with self-worth and stuff and it's ultimately kind of sad. It really is. Um, but, uh, yeah. Don't don't be in an abusive relationship. Walk out the fucking door. You'll be, fine. You'll be much better off than potentially murdered or beaten uh, or... Or you have to walk on eggshells all the time, or it's just fucking annoying that I, I feel like it's like, why are you going through my phone? I'm not doing anything. You know, that that's annoying as fuck too. Uh, but yeah. It's broken trust. Broken trust. All right, we're gonna get the rest of the square up. We gotta go. Mm -hmm. So what do you got coming up, X-ray girl? Ooh, I have uh poor choices tonight with tugs um at 9 p.m. And I'm thinking I might still play. Mm, a scary game sometime this afternoon. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, subscribe to my channel. That's it. All right. I'm going to have some lunch. Didn't think I was going to do a video, new video this quick, but times change. <laughs> times change. <laughs> God. He's working Garrett real hard. Yeah, poor Garrett. I, I already informed him. I told him he was going to have a few days off after that one because I took years off his life. I'm all, sorry, dude. Sorry, bro. <laughs> uh, thanks to the Mod Rotics. Thanks to everyone who left a super chat and donation. You help keep the lights on. Bless you guys. Hail to the fellowship. It sucks that we had to go through so much bullshit. Uh, I mean, we are winning. For whatever reason, we are, we are winning. Uh, Woke Hollywood is falling. It's crumbling. Disney is, is, the, is the lost leader in that. Uh, they are losing, and they're leading everybody in losing and causing a lot of the losing. But ultimately, like, we lost the things we love. Hopefully some will still be around. Uh, you can always look at the old stuff and enjoy it. That's always going to be there for you. Uh, you don't need Hollywood. Hollywood needs you, and they need to start acting like it. And we need to see a far more humble and grateful Hollywood if they are going to survive. Period. End of story. If not, then 
fuckity bye. Uh, thanks again, everyone. We'll see you next Wednesday on the Nooner. This Friday we have Kelly Jones. We have Kelly and Jones. Should I? Yeah. Say if we. Oh, Graham Nolan. And Graham Nolan, two comic book legends, on at the same time. On such a crazy week, and I'm sure they can offer a lot of insight. I mean, they, you know, some of them might have peripherally worked with Hollywood, but they worked within the comic book industry, which was a microcosm of what Hollywood is. They have plenty of insights for that. So it'll be fun show. And then of course, yes, we'll be at LA comic con in a month. we got West Wisconsin coming in a couple weeks. Yep. It's going to, and then we have the Marvels. We have the Marvels next week. Loki Gary's is so happy. <laughs> Loki is. En oh, wow. That's right. Loki ends on the same day. Marvels comes out. Yes. I'm going to be busy next week. Holy shit. <laughs> um yeah so uh lots of stuff going on lots and lots of stuff going on and uh rachel zegler is going to hit the red carpet <laughs> it's, uh, it's just like christmas it is but in november uh thanks to everyone we will see you next time ciao